Houston and the campus of the University of Texas, where a sellout crowd is headed on as they enter Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium for the season opener. It's the North Texas Mean Green against the seventh ranked team in the country, the Texas Longhorns. Hi everyone, I'm Bill Land along with Gary Reasons. Glad to have you with us for the start of another exciting college football season and a lot of excitement surrounding this one, Gary. We start with Texas and what an offense that Longhorn fans are expecting. You always start with a signal caller and Vince Young is a guy that really can do it all. Really explosiveness here for the Texas offense. Vince Young a year ago, Bill, a freshman played extremely well. He's a dual threat quarterback, a young man that can throw the ball, but he does a great job with his feet. Almost a thousand yards, just two yards shy of a thousand yards rushing as a freshman he's going to lead this offense. The question mark is his receivers. That's going to play out. But also, offensively, they've got a great running back, and that's Cedric Benson. Cedric, he's a young man. He's a senior this year. He's going to lead this offensive football team, and the shoulders, the football team's going to be on his shoulders to run the ball. Cedric Benson has a chance to become the uh, four 1,000-yard rushing seasons. The first three seasons of his career, he's done that. He wants to become the sixth time, all NCAA time to get that uh, this year. And on the other side, defensively, they've got certainly an award winner in Derek Johnson. He has really become a leader of this defensive group. Well, DJ's a lot of fun to watch. He's a linebacker that I've watched for a number of years here at Texas that I've been most impressed with. He's got ability. He's got speed. He's got a new defensive coordinator, Greg Robinson, an NFL coach who's now with the Longhorns. Taught him a few tricks. I think you're going to see a lot of exceptional plays from Derek Johnson, Big 12 potentially defensive player of the year. And don't slight the opponent tonight, North Texas, the three-time defending Sunbelt Conference champ. they got a pretty good runner in their own right. And Pat Patrick Cobbs with more on him, John Radigan. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Yeah, Patrick Cobbs, the numbers are very impressive. The digits, not so good. Patrick Cobbs has been wearing a cast on his hand throughout training camp. Yeah, the digits, the right thumb hurting him. He just took that cast off his hand. Today, he has a tender right thumb, and don't be surprised if he carries that ball in his left hand. But the numbers, as we said, very impressive. 152.7 yards per game last year, and he has now rushed in nine consecutive 100-yard rushing performances. The uh, Longhorns, though, might be looking to have him carry that ball in the left hand. If they see it in the right hand, they might key on that. We'll send it back upstairs now to Bill. All right, thank you, John. The veteran quarterback, Scott Hall, leads this mean green team. It was thought earlier this year he'd be pushed by Andrew Smith. Tragically, Smith from Bay City, Texas, was killed in an automobile accident just a few days before the start of two-a-days. He was honored here tonight in a pregame moment of silence. Introducing IMAX. Welcome back to Austin, Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium. Mad Dog and crew ready to take the field for the Texas Longhorns. Strength and conditioning coach Madden there as Bill Land, Gary Reasons, and John Radigan. Welcome you back here to Austin. A bit steamy tonight, but not unusual for this time of the year. Sun has been in and out throughout the day. A full house expected here of 82,000 as the Longhorns open up the campaign against the mean green of North Texas. There's nothing like being at the ballpark, folks, I'll tell you. And what a thrill that's got to be for those Longhorn players, Gary, especially those newcomers. A lot of energy in this stadium. I'll tell you, those freshmen, this is an experience they will never forget to run out here onto this field with the pageantry, the color that's here in this stadium. It's a lot of fun. And hey, they've got their eyes set on a big prize. They want to do, they want to win the Big 12 championship this year, which is a tough thing to do. And they may even have their eyes on the national championship here in Texas. Yeah, the Texas Longhorns realized that with the consistency that they have built under Mac Brown since he took over, in 98 has really been something and it gives them an opportunity to compete year in and year out in an upper echelon of course first things first they want a big 12 championship and before all of that of course you got to set the stage by taking care of business in the non-conference play and that opens up here tonight with north texas before meeting the university of arkansas and then rice on the non-conference slate and unt a ball club that has continued to grow and gain confidence under the direction of daryl dickey who was named after none other than Darryl 
Battle Royal. I think this is a great test for the University of Texas to start against a very quality football team, an emerging team that Daryl Dickey has put together at North Texas, a team that has won the Sun Belt Conference cha Championship the last three years. They have 18 wins consecutive in the Sun Belt uh, Conference, doing a great job there, Daryl Dickey does. They come into this game here with a lot of expectations for this year, and it's going to be a good ball game tonight, Bill. We've got a couple of teams that run the ball exceptionally well. Talk about the Texas offense and uh, Vincent Young and Cedric Benson. And on the other side, they've got a young man in Patrick Cobbs who can run it as well. And there's Mac Brown as he puts on the headset and gears Texas up. They are ranked number seven in the nation coming in here as the Longhorns open up against the mean green of North Texas. And you see his seventh year with a record of 59 and 18 and realize that he took over a program that was coming off a four and seven season in 97 and now double digit in the win column every year is expected and then even more as he would say well it really is expected this team has become a, a championship caliber football team under Mac Brown and they expect to win championships he hasn't gotten it done yet but the Iowa is always looking towards the future and hopefully this could be their year and Texas is ready to kick it off here as Richard McGee Richmond McGee sets to kick it off and deep for the mean green Zach Muzzy and James Mitchell. Mitchell on the advice of Muzzy will down it in the end zone and they'll take over first and 10 on their own 20 yard line. So UNT will break the sideline huddle and bring it out with senior quarterback Scott Hall. And you take a look at his numbers from last year, what he has done as a starter from not too far Shirts, Texas, just down the pike at Clemens High School, where he was an honorable mention all staters, a quarterback and a defensive back. The offensive line, Brewster is the bell cow here. First team all conference pick and a senior, the backs and receivers. Let's take a look right away at how Cobbs fares because he certainly is a critical part when their leading receiver from a year ago with 34 grabs. And on the first down call, Cobbs is smothered. Leading it is Eric Hall, the strong side linebacker, 6'2", 245. And let's take a look at that Texas defensive group. Up front, Crowder. Wright is certainly an all-star. Stevie Lee and Brian Robison. The linebackers, Hall, Harris, and of course, Derek Johnson, the returning All-American. The secondary, stout as usual with Griffin, Giger, Huff, and Aaron Ross. Cobbs on a second down carry. Almost got back to the original line of scrimmage. So it'll be a third and long for North Texas and certainly not what Daryl Dickey was designing on the opening series. Well, what Daryl Dickey is looking at against the Texas defense is the defense is putting eight men up against the line of scrimmage, trying to contain that running game that's been explosive in the past two or three years here for North Texas, trying to commit to stop the run here, first of all, early in this first quarter, the Longhorn defense. And the keys for UNT. I think they've got to run the ball, burn the clock, keep the offense off the field of the Longhorns, commit to stopping the run when they get out there on defense. That means stopping Vincent Young and Cedric Benson. They can't make mistakes. The turnovers, they cannot have penalties here in this stadium. Third and 10, and again, they deliver to Cobbs, and he gets a yard or two to the 22, maybe. It'll be a fourth and long and a punting situation here for the Mean Green of North Texas. So the Texas defense, as expected, charged up and saying, bring it on. Michael Huff leading cheers, and there's plenty that will follow his lead. A lot of excitement here in this stadium, and I tell you, they like to make plays in all phases of the game, Bill. Special teams is key for them. They've got Selvin Young as a punt returner. He's an explosive returner here for the Longhorns. Last year, Young returned both a punt and a kickoff return for a touchdown in the open against New Mexico State. And the punter, Cadlebar, low kick. Fair catch called. Not given an opportunity to field the football, though, and flags litter the field around the 46 of the Texas Longhorns. And a young man run into Salvin Young there as he's trying to field that punt. Kind of the young man that ran into him was being blocked by one of the UT players, but uh, Salvin Young, you see the fair catch wave there, and you see the block. I'm not sure that's a, a real penalty, but nonetheless, it's going to go against North Texas.
Fair catch, interference on the kicking team. Number two, 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Markeith Knowlton, the offender, if you will, as Daryl Dickey looks on, and that's something new this year that the officials in college football are giving the number of the individual that. Uh, well, that's well, good and bad, Bill. Hey, Depends well, on the perspective from the players or, or you know the fans. <laughs> accountability, my man. That's definitely accountability. <laughs> now basketball could just get the guys who make the fouls to make make them raise their hands again. We'll finally have things right. The world of sports. Oh boy, if you did it wrong, just fess up. All right, here's Texas with first and 10 from its own 38-yard line with quarterback Vincent Young. Hands off to Benson. Benson up across the 30. Watch out! 20, 10, touchdown, Texas! 38 yards from the get-go. Bill, they deal with a play that's become a staple here for Vincent Young. It's the zone read. He reads the defensive end, and Cedric Benson hurdles inside there. Does a nice job of reading that play, and Cedric Benson, hey, a slimmer, faster Benson this year for the Longhorn offense. Looks like he's going to be off to a great start here running the football. And now for the point after, Dusty Mangum, who in his career is 158 of 160. And he hits this one as well, and... Daryl Dickey's worst nightmare coming through as Cedric Benson says howdy do to 04 with a 38 yard touchdown run 7 nothing horn. Well, Bill, this has been a staple here for the Texas offense this last season with Vincent Young in the shotgun position. Hands off to Cedric Benson. This play here has done wonders for them because it gives the quarterback a chance to read. Cedric Benson, the benefactor of it here. Take a look at the defensive end at the top of the screen. Stop it right there. You've got Vincent Young. He's reading that defensive end there. He sees him protecting the run around the outside, and then he's going to take it on through. Cedric Benson shows the speed. The slimmer Cedric Benson I talked about, he's down from about 225 last year to about 218 now. Showing he's got plenty of speed to take it to the house. And Texas electrifies this big crowd here in Austin. And once again, Muzzy is deep to return along with Mitchell. And Mitchell again down it deep in the end zone. And North Texas, as they did just two minutes, 11 seconds ago, will take over first to 10 on its own 20 yard line. And certainly for North Texas, they don't want to fall into this trap where they lose the field position game and they give up short runs or short touchdown scores for Texas. Well, over the past several years, North Texas Bill has, has gotten their schedule such that they're going to play these kinds of games against Texas, against Oklahoma to start the season. And one thing that Daryl Dickey told me about his football team and what he wanted to recruit is we wanted to recruit quality guys, guys that come into a heated situation and won't fold under that pressure. He's done a great job recruiting, and he's got these guys focused. They're going to go back and do what they do best, and that's run the football, play action pass with Scott Hall. So Hall with Cobbs in the backfield. Didn't seem to be bothered on the grip the first three carries, which is the first possession. Gets it here. Another wall of Texas defenders and virtually no gain for Cobbs. Now, Cobbs is a guy who last year not only led the nation in rushing per game, but he averaged 5.5 per carry and 19 touchdowns. Yeah, but what you've got here is you got a lot of orange shirts that are winning the line of scrimmage. And when you win at the line of scrimmage, you're going to win the running game. And they're stopping Cobbs, trying to run the ball inside. Now, the other thing about the Texas defense is their speed. Their speed at the linebacker spot particularly is superlative. You talk about Derek Johnson, his ability to get outside. This Texas defense is pretty loaded. Philip Geiger led the way with the tackle there, slicing in from the free safety slot. Second down and 10. Comes a fifth carry and minus yards, a loss of five. Back to the 15, Tim Crowder, the sophomore from Tyler John Tyler greets him. Well, Tim Crowder, the left defensive end, comes all the way across the field, showing his speed and his athleticism. He's going to be a good one here. He's going to be down the line of scrimmage. Take a look there as Crowder comes down the line of scrimmage and gets Patrick Cobbs in the backfield. Good job at the point of attack there on the other side. you got Brian Robinson and Roderick Wright holding their own, doing a nice job. And good job there by the Texas defense. Get in the backfield for a negative play. UNT slash Cobb, five rushes, minus four yards. Third and 15. Hall to throw for the first time, nearly picked off. 
the chest of Michael Huff is what stopped that one. Well, Michael Huff had a chance there, Bill. He did a nice job of reading the throw of Scott Hall. Broke underneath. The ball did hit him square in the chest. He's going to look at that one on the film and say, hey, that should have been my first interception of the year. But two series now for the Texas defense, a three and out, moving that North Texas offense back. Now you've got your punt returner back on the field in Selvin Young. Selvin Young last year as a sophomore averaged 24-plus on kickoff returns. He had the 39-yard punt return against New Mexico State for a touchdown. And he stands on his own 45 as Brad Cadlebar from Menace, Texas, boots this one away. Young crosses midfield, 48-yard line. Broke a tackle, 45-40, and then type roped out of bounds just inside the 40-yard line of North Texas. So Texas, again, excellent field position. Last time it was one play, a score with a 38-yard scamper from Benson. And let's take a look now to give you an idea of what Texas sends out offensively. Once again, a huge offensive line. Returning starter Jonathan Scott at the uh, anchor side on the tackle. Quarterback Vince Young sits behind these guys. Stutter, Glenn, Allen, Blaylock up front. The receivers you mentioned, Gary, are guys that very talented, just not a lot of experience. Certainly Tony Jeffrey is a key returner, though, because he has made some big plays. Young on first and 10. Comes out throwing. Finds Jeffrey. Out of bounds at the 26-yard line, and that'll be a first down tackle or the push out, if you will, made by Marquis Milton. And let's look at the Mean Green defensive group. Wassum is a stud, a senior from Fort Bend, Texas, and on the Lombardi watch list. Cardwell, Pruitt, and Harris join him up front. The backers, Monroe, McNack, and Sean Early. And the secondary, Covington, Priestley, Knowlton, and Jonas Buckles. Buckles, another first-team all-conference pick from the Sun Belt, who has 11 career interceptions. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Benson, a fake to him, and then Vince Young. They stay home with him. He's tackled at the 24-yard line where Knowlton makes the stop. Bill, when I talked to Greg Robinson about his quarterback, he said the most impressive thing to him about Vincent Young is how poised and how ready he is to play this year. What he was talking about was how comfortable he is. A year ago, everything was really fast for him as a freshman. Now he's gone through that freshman season. He's into this, got his first uh, spring season under his belt here with the Longhorns. And now into his sophomore year, he said that the game has slowed down. And you've seen him play pretty well early on this football game. Texas, second possession, and it's second and eight. The ball at the 24-yard line. Young keeps it, slips up to the 20-yard line and crosses down near the 19 before he is stopped. And boy, for a quarterback to be able to pick those things up and make improvement in all areas, how key is that? Well, it's tough on a defense, I tell you. When you have to account for everybody on the field, most times you're taking care of the running back and the receivers. But when you have to account for the quarterback in the run game, which is what Vincent Young gives you here, going against any defense, that's going to be very, very difficult. If he's a great passer, you can do that very easily in trying to coordinate all the receivers. But when he's that dual threat quarterback, which Vincent Young is, it's a deadly threat against uh, any defense. Third and four, the ball at the 20. Out of the gun, Young passes under thrown. Looking for Thomas, David Thomas, a junior, 6'3", 238, returning starter. Last year had 14 catches for three touchdowns. And Texas will bring on the field goal unit here as Dusty Mangum will come on. Last year he was seven of nine, as long as a 45-yarder. And this one will be from 37 yards out. Don't get that Senior out of Mesquite, Texas. Hit on 16 of 26 as a sophomore and 16 of 23 as a freshman. 37 yarder, long enough, and it is good. So Texas scores on its first two possessions. Four plays, 20-yard drive stalled, and the three-pointer is good by Mangum. Longhorn pleaded 10-0 with a timeout here in Austin. Field goal by Texas, and it's 10-0 Longhorns with 9.43 to go here in this first quarter of play for the 4 season. And once again, the Longhorns will kick it off. Richmond McGee, the junior on a Garland, Texas, also doubles as the punter. This one be taken by Mitchell at the three. 10, 15, and buries his head forward as he's out near the 16 and a half yard line where UNT will take over. And Giger made the tackle. 13 yards on the return. 
All right, you're Daryl Dickey. What do you tell your bunch now? Well, I think you got to come out here and get something positive happening. They haven't tried a lot of misdirection stuff against this defense yet, but I think they'll have to do a little bit of boot pass, perhaps. Let's take a look here at Greg Robinson, the new co-defense quarter here for the Longhorns. Got a guy who's got a lot of NFL experience the past 14 years in the NFL. Brings a little bit different mentality here at this defense here for the Longhorns, and they're hoping they're going to have a lot of success with it. He's taught them a few new wrinkles, and I want to see how well they work when they started off here tonight. Most recently, the Chiefs and Broncos says he's loving the college atmosphere and the chance to work with young people. Cobbs carries the football, and he is stopped near the 19 by Derek Johnson. Preseason National Player of the Year on the defensive side of the ball. Everyone agrees to be a top NFL selection. Johnson, 6'4", 235, a senior at Waco. Well, what he does is he moves the ball exceptionally well. He's a linebacker on the weak side here, comes all the way across the line, and they're on part of the tackle. And this young man, I think, has an exceptional career ahead of him. Obviously, a good future in the NFL, but he wants to have a great senior campaign. He wants to win that Big 12 championship and potentially a national championship. Second and seven from the 19, and Cobbs takes it to the 20 just across there where Giger meets him. Giger last year, 90 tackles and an interception. An honorable mention, all Big 12 selection. A senior from Shreveport, uh, that great football school evangel. Now, Bill, we're talking about Derek Johnson. Had a chance to turn pro a year ago. The young man is a linebacker, one of the best in the country. But he decided to come back to Texas, much like a Roy Williams did a year ago for his senior year. Cedric Benson, the same thing. A couple of players that potentially are first-day draft picks, first-round picks in the NFL next year. One of the reasons Texas is rated at number seven in the preseason. Third and six for UNT. Their first two possessions have resulted in punts. They try to move it here and incomplete intended for Cobbs and Hall taking the blame on that one. Had a chance to talk to DJ yesterday about why he came back to the University of Texas. Everybody has their own, uh, I guess, personal options of, of what they're going to do in the personal lifestyle, but. Uh, Mine's, uh, mine was to uh, get close to my degree and uh, to uh, become just a, uh, a better leader uh, on the field and off the field, just, just to mature a little bit more. Johnson saying also, one of the things he's learning on the field, sometimes he said a ball would go beyond him and he kind of said, well, that's not mine anymore. He's pursuing all the time, isn't he? And that's a mentality that Greg Robinson has brought to this defense. We'll talk about that also as things move along here in this ballgame. All right, a timeout is called here at Texas with the Longhorns in control in the early going 10 0 over the North Texas Mean Green. We'll be right. Welcome back to Austin, Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium, Longhorns 10, North Texas 0. UNT backed up again deep in its own backyard as Brad Cadlebar comes up to the line to make sure everything is straight following the timeout. There's Greg Robinson meeting with his defensive group that has been strong so far, forcing the third punt of the night on the third possession. Once again, Selvin Young, the threat for the home run, is back on his own 41. Cadlebar, good protection, gets it off. High kick, Young circles back, 38-yard line. Dance forward. Gets near the 48-yard line, and he is brought down by Dominique Mackey, T.J. Covington there, Mitchell covering as well, and a 42-yard punt. Well, the start of this ball game has been exactly how Mac Brown would like to see it. His defense playing exceptionally well, three series for North Texas, and we're getting nothing accomplished now. His defense out there for the third time, a chance to put more points on the board on each offensive possession. See the cannon there as they shoot that thing here when they score at uh, Texas. They may need some more gunpowder if Texas continues as they have on the first couple of possessions. First time, though, that they start in their own territory. Didn't tune in early. Cedric Benson brought them to their feet with a 38-yard run on the first carry of the season. Handoff here. Nothing doing for Selvin Young on his first carry. He stopped at the 45-yard line. Well, a big cog in the middle for the North Texas defense. It is not there this year is uh, Sun Belt Player of the Year, Brandon Kennedy, who's moved on. But uh, So they've got some holes to fill up there on the defensive front for North Texas. A lot of young players having to move in there. That's an interesting spot for them. Good job there on that first down play against the Longhorns. Yeah, Booker Kennedy, who was a terrific player, one of the last guys cut by the Denver Broncos. They may keep him, we're told, uh, in slight of an injury, but may put him on their, in their taxi squad. So, you an idea of the talent they had there, then that's not easy to replace. Again, on the ground is Young, and he is stopped at the 47-yard line. 
Yeah, if you talk to the North Texas coaches, their biggest concern, they like their guys up front, but they got to find some more linebackers. They really do. They're, all three of their starting linebackers are gone from a year ago. You see the numbers that they put up there. These guys were superlative for the last two or three years playing defense for these guys. They've got to got to see the new guys here and how what their production has been. Inexperience is what the key word is there for the North Texas linebackers. Young slices it, completes it. First down at the 43-yard line. On the reception, Lima Swede, a freshman, redshirt freshman from Washington, Texas, went to Brenham High School. Well, you see here, good protection right there. Vincent Young just steps up and throws the ball down and inside to Swede. Bill, you saw him in a high school all-star game, you told me, and said he's got great tools. And when I saw him here in practice, looks like he's got the size, the speed that they want, and hopefully he's going to fill one of those big shoes here by those receivers that have, are now gone from the University of Texas. Well, at Brenham High School, 31 of his 72 catches went for touchdowns. So, yeah, he's He's got the long ball in his arsenal. First and 10 at the 43. Young is two of three tonight for 24 yards. Make it three of four. Jeffrey dances outside. A little bit of a loss on the play here. His forward motion looks like the back of the line of scrimmage, though, as Walter Priestley, there he is, made the tackle. Senior from Alif Elsig down in the Houston area. He's a three-year starter for this UNT defensive group. Yeah, he and Buckles back there lead that defensive uh, secondary. Priestley, a senior, doing a good job coming up, making a good sure tackle on a quick screen to the outside. Second and 10. Second and 10 now with Texas leading 10-0, 544 to go first quarter at the 43 of the UNT. Hand off to Young, tripped up a couple of times. Great forward motion though, and he continues to pick up positive yards to the 39-yard line of the Mean Green where Knowlton is again there to make the tackle. Knowlton, a senior from McKinney, Texas, with 52 tackles, four INTs last year. One of the things you have to do, you can't trip your tailback, Vincent, when you go back there. He runs right into Selvin, and good job for Selvin staying on target, getting up into the line, and just didn't have all the speed he wanted to get going. Vincent, 6'5", Bill. Young man, got a lot of ability back there. He's a good-sized young man with a lot of speed and great athleticism. They call him the freak for good reason. Sets up strong to throw. Fakes now dumps it up. And completes it to David Thomas for another first down. He'll move the chains near the 27-yard line of North Texas. Real bright spot here for the Texas Longhorns is the play of their tight ends. They've got David Thomas and Bo Scaife back for a six-year so these two tight ends, bookends perhaps for the Longhorns this year, they're going to try to utilize the tight end more in the system here. Good good movement there by David. You see his footwork that he has, and they'll even split him out in the wide receiver position, get him down the field. He's got enough athletic ability and speed to stretch the defense a little bit. First and 10 at the 27. Young again to set up the throw. And he completes this one out on the flat. Down Inside the 20 and out of bounds near the first down marker. Sean Early makes the tackle on Matthews, the fullback. Will Matthews, big senior from here in Austin out of Westwood High. Well, watch the read of the quarterback here. You're going to see Matthews come out to the flat here and just throw it out there. You see the defensive zone coverage in the backfield, and Matthews just pulls it up and goes forward looking for that first down marker, and he gets it. I think they've spotted it for him for the first down. Good job by Selvin Young reading the defense and taking what's allowed. Matthews just one reception last year. He scored three touchdowns on the ground, all against Oklahoma State. Gives him a first and 10 at the 16 of the mean green. Selvin Young, 10, 5, the power, tumbles in, touchdown, Longhorn. Impressive. Selvin Young on the cutback here. He got misdirection in the backfield. A fullback comes weak side, but Selvin Young, watch the power that he has here. Takes on Mark was at Norton trying to get the tackle on him. And good job by Selvin Young. Powered into the end zone of the touchdown for the Longhorns. Eight plays, 56 yards. Selvin Young. A 16-yarder to cap it off. And now Mangum trying to make it a 17-0 start for the Longhorns. Good. Texas, three possessions, three scores, and Young leading this one. Watch the offensive line here, the surge. Everybody moves to the left, and the cutback lane is there. Selvin Young reads it very well, and then powers on in. Pass Nolt for the score. Good job by the offensive line. Good read here by the tailback, and the speed, and the power gets him the touchdown.
a little cool air for Selvin Young, the junior out of Houston Jersey Village High School. And last year, 35 carries, 151 yards. You see he's a little bit more involved here right from the get-go this season. Well, three possessions now for Texas, three scoring drives, two touchdowns in the field goal. Mac Brown has to be pleased with how his offense has performed and his defense. They've done exactly what they wanted to do here to start this ball game. Hey, they're ranked number seven in the nation coming into this football game, and I want to try to live up to that, rank, that ranking. A few question marks this year for Mac Brown and his football team, Bill, but I think that uh, they've answered the bell pretty well early in this ballgame. And Texas, total time of possession, 5 minutes, 18 seconds. What's it gotten them? 114 yards and 17 points. And Daryl Dickey on the other side, realizing if his club doesn't do a little something offensively, his defense going to get it worn out in a hurry. And, and they're not winning at all in the game of field position either. Need a kick return and something just to get down to the boost. And again, here's McGee's kick in the end zone. They'll down it. Go first to 10 from the 20. And let's go down to the third member of our crew, John Radigan. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Anybody who saw the beginning of our broadcast knows that the University of Texas did a very classy thing in observing a moment of silence for the fallen soldier of the North Texas Mean Green. Andrew Smith died on his way to football practice, and he, the season has been dedicated to Andrew Smith. He would have been battling for the starting quarterback job. You see the back of the helmets. Every player has number 12 on the back of his helmet, and the coach has number 12 embroidered. All the coaches have number 12 embroidered on the sleeves of their coaching shirts this season definitely dedicated to Andrew Smith. Well, we saw him here two years ago when Scott Hall got injured in the first game of the season and Smith filled in admirably and had become a real complete member of this club. Completed here by Hall and that gets UNT a first down out to the 39-yard line. Andy Blunt, the receiver, senior from Bandera, Texas, had 22 grabs a year ago. Well, that's something I think that North Texas has to do. A little misdirection, boot pass here, get Scott Hall out of the pocket, away from the pressure. Then you're going to see Blunt come on the left side, number seven, the tight end all the way across the field, get behind the linebackers. Good deliver by Hall, and hey, that's the first first down here for North Texas. First completion for Scott Hall, who last year completed 58% of his passes for 1,700-plus yards, 13 touchdowns, and five interceptions. A little breathing room, finally, for Demean Green. This one deflected. Derek Johnson, he's made a living with deflections and interceptions. Wright may have gotten a hand on it as well. Johnson with eight career interceptions. Pretty amazing for a linebacker. Well, he gets all over the field, makes plays. Derek Johnson, he just amazes everyone every time he's out there for his athleticism, what he's able to do, rush the quarterback, cover. A little bit different this year, what they're asking him to do, because he play a lot more zone defense in a Greg Robinson-style defense, and I think that's going to help him as he moves on to the next level. This is the first time out there. The Longhorns going to be playing a little bit more zone defense. Good chance to do that against a balanced offensive attack of, the, of North Texas. Preseason All-American Roderick Wright put the pressure on for that play. This one is complete to Mitchell. 50-45. And down near the 42, Texas recovers the fumble, but they whistled it dead. And is it still UNT football? I believe so. Well, this is a good job here by North Texas, moving the ball down the field. They throw it out to the flat. Derek Johnson is going to be chasing from the inside out. Take a look here at number 11. Ball's going to go to the flat, and he can't catch him until the very end. Gets the first down, trying to strip the ball from the backside. Scott Hall doing a nice job of reading and taking what the defense gives him. So the second first down, both on this drive, and now Hall is 2 of 5 for 38 yards. First to 10 at the 42 of Texas. And again, complete to Muzzy. And another loose ball, and Texas has recovered this one. Yes, Longhorn football. Derek Johnson, I believe, was in the middle of it again. Greg Robinson taught D uh, DJ patience this year. That's what he's talking about, patience. He's the weak side linebacker, number 11. What I mean by patience, do your job. He's going to be on the weak side. He's got to take care of the back side of the field. See Derek Johnson come back and make the play, strip the ball out. Good job there on the Longhorns. Ball's kicked back in the field of play, and they get the recovery. Johnson certainly the strip and caused the fumble, and I'm not sure who came up with the recovery as there was a herd of them all pouncing on the football, which is, again, something that Greg Robinson is really stretching to his team. Derek Johnson 
and crew last year forced 29 turnovers. Well, there's a methodology to Greg Robinson and going to the football. We'll talk about that and how he prepares his football team. And right away, they come out going to the deep man, and Thomas has run out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Well, I talked about him earlier, about his ability to stretch the defense. David Thomas, a tight end by position, but he has enough speed to get down the field. He's going to work to the outside. David Thomas lined up out, out in the backfield as a fullback, goes through the line of scrimmage, he gets down the seam just outside the hash mark. Does a nice job of catching the football, and you see his ability to run after the catch. That's the athlete that David Thomas is here for the Longhorns. 36 yards on the play for Thomas. And Thomas has now caught two for 48. First and 10, Texas from the 27th. Still 3.09 to go first quarter and up 17-0. Benson. Carrying three or four with him down to the 18-yard line. Just shy of another first down. Give him nine as Monty Stevenson, redshirt freshman from Alvarado, made the, the stop. Listen in on this play. Well, there's a lot of contact out there. North Texas is a physical defense. They want to play, keep everything inside of them if they can. The Texas line of scrimmage, though, moving the ball down the field, these running backs are doing a good job. Down to the 14-yard line. Benson, as Burris makes the stop. Parks also in on the play, and Texas Scoring on its first three possessions. Benson, a 38-yard run. Mangum, a 37-yard field goal. Young, Selvin, that is, a 16-yard run. And now, after taking over on a fumble recovery, the Longhorns marching in first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Out of the gun, it is to up tight to the center is Vincent Young with Benson alone back behind him. Two tight end offensive look here. Benson takes advantage of that power. And mark him near the seven yard line. Well, he's going to be happy about how his offensive line is playing. Take a look at the right guard there. That is Will Allen, number 72. This young man does a good job of staying, getting on his block and moving the line of scrimmage. Take a look at the big orange. They're moving down the field. Number 72 pushes him out of the way. And that's where Cedric Benson gets right in behind Will Allen. Good offensive line play. Four plays, 57 yards on this drive thus far. Last year, what they do in the red zone, 64 trips, 47 touchdowns, nine field goals for 88% success rate. Second and two from the six. Benson put on the brakes, leaps forward for the first down, and it'll be a first and goal for the Longhorns. Owasom makes the tackle. Bill, the last two plays show you what balance the offense has when you have two good tight ends. You have number 16, David uh, Thomas, and you have Bo Scaife, number 80. Both of them line up on opposite sides of the line of scrimmage. So it's a very balanced formation. Then Vincent Young just reads the defense, and he can audible the line of scrimmage to go whichever side he would like to. And that offensive line is doing their job up front as well. What a tough prospect for the defense. First and goal from the two. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. As the Longhorns score again, Matthews, the fullback, gets into the act with his first TD of the season. Will Matthews. They're spreading it around here in Austin. Well, power football is back here at UT, and that's what they're doing here, powering the ball down the field, running against this North Texas defense. The linebackers are gone from a year ago for the, for the Eagles, the mean green, and got to find a way to slow down this Texas running attack. Now for the point after. Mangum's hit the first two in a field goal, and it's a three of three in the PAT department. And Texas, with the first quarter still going and 59 seconds remaining, has made it a 24 to nothing game and a near flawless performance. So UNT finally got the football moving a little bit offensively, Gary, but then the turnover, and Texas makes its longest drive and punches it in for seven. Well, that's the defense doing good things here for the Longhorns. Turn it over to the offense, and 
offensively, I tell you, for North Texas State, they moved the ball very well there, but the turnover was critical and something you can't do. Daryl Dickey knows you can't make mistakes when you come into a, an arena like this, a chance to play against a nationally ranked football team, number seven coming into this game, the Longhorns are. And I tell you, it's going to be a, a long night here. If they can't get things squared away defensively to slow this offense down to the Longhorns, and offensively, they've also got to move the ball, keep the defense off their, their offense off the field, and give their defense a break. Six plays, 63 yards, and Texas puts seven more on the board, and McGee gets to work on his kickoff again. And the Longhorns with 177 yards of total offense in the first quarter. And they've had great field position. <laughs> McGee again to kick it off. Buzzy and Mitchell will be deep for UNT. This one is brought out. Buzzy to the 10. Broke a couple. Still on his feet. A heck of a return for Muzzy. He earned what he could have done by downing it with a knee in the end zone. But I tell you what, tip by cap trying to make something happen. Here. Trying to make something happen there. Doing a good job here. But I tell you, his other returner back there says, oh, don't run by me. <laughs> I like to block for you. But hey, he, he makes some guys miss, breaks a few tackles, get back to the 20-yard line, which is where he would have gotten the ball. Kind of a gutsy play there. Now the Eagles have to get going here, try to get something, moving the ball down the field against his defense, which has been pretty stingy. It was Kevin Moore, number 30, back there telling him, hey, well, wait a minute. Let me help you out if you're coming out of here. So UNT, fifth possession to start at its own 20-yard line. Pops, nothing doing again as Texas defense. We're talking about new coaches. You know, Dick Tomey is one of the new coaches, and I think of the desert swarm that he had when he was the head coach at Arizona. We'll get more on that in a moment. First, let's go down to John Radigan. Hey, I tell you what, Bill, note on Patrick Cobbs. He obviously hasn't been very effective yet in this game, but part of the reason is that injury that we talked about before the game, that is a broken thumb and that is still officially a cast on his right hand. He has an air cast on there and he has never carried the ball in his left hand. He's feeling awkward and out of sync, according to people on the North Texas sideline. It sure has looked like it so far, guys. Yeah, and really a, a tough situation for the youngster because an opportunity on a national stage here, and obviously you know, there's a little bit of different feel to it. Hall completes hey. the pass here on a second down and 11 from his own 19 as Nevins makes the reception. Chris is a sophomore from St. Charles, Missouri. Well, this is a chance here for North Texas to move the ball down the field. Scott Hall's going to throw it out to his outlet pass here. Leads his receiver a little bit too far. It's right on the sideline there. You know, back to the offensive performance here and, and Patrick Cobbs and what he's been able to do. I think a lot of that has to do with what Texas is doing defensively. They're playing in the North Texas backfield. They're getting through there, getting penetration, and they're disrupting everything that North Texas is doing, running, trying to run the football. So Patrick Cobbs, if he don't have any, doesn't have any blocking, he's not going to get too many yards at all. Third and eight at the 22. Final play of the quarter. Hall unloads. And Goodness, what a shot by Giger in the secondary. Woo. Well, that was Blount, the tight end, coming across the field. Scott Hall hit him earlier in the ball game, but not this time. Giger does a good job and gives him a pop. That's the end of an impressive first quarter. Benson got him going with a 37-yard touchdown run. Everybody's gotten in the act. Horns pounding him. Speed Tuesday Original Series. Welcome back. Bevo, there will be a changing of the guard here tonight at halftime. Bevo 13 moving on for Bevo 14. Let's go down to John Radigan. Yeah, does this guy look familiar to you? That is Bevo 13. Over here is Bevo 14, who officially takes over his duties as the official Bevo today. It is actually going to happen during the halftime ceremony, guys. At the end of halftime, Bevo 13 will be retired. Bevo 13, the most successful Bevo in Texas Longhorns history. Bevo 14 over here, just hoping that he can have as good a career as Bevo 13 did. Guys, back to you. 14, enjoying a nice red shirt process before coming in to take over for 13. And 13 says by record speaks for itself the red shirt the first half because he's got to work the second half That's I think right. they're taking him out and for retirement at halftime exactly so 
Texas. They can chuckle a little bit here. Handlebar's punt taken by Young, and he fields it. And Texas will take over to start the second quarter after a 49-yard kick by Candlebar, who was a second-team all-conference pick in the Sun Belt last year. And now the Longhorns will start their first second-quarter drive from their own 29-yard line. Yeah, that's a little bit of help on the field position. Thank you, Mr. Foner of the North Texas defense says. Benson broke another tackle. Boy, he looks great, Gary. Knowlton makes the tackle. One of the things they said when he would come back from baseball, he just didn't look fresh. It was like, boy, I need some downtime. Well, he didn't want to shirk his responsibilities, but this year by being here the whole time, I think he is probably just stronger and in better shape, not that he wasn't in good shape in the past. And also the leadership aspect of it, Bill. For him to be here for his senior year back in Austin, getting ready to go with his teammates, that spoke volumes, and uh, he was there all summer long, and I think that Mac Brown very very pleased that he decided to do so, and he looks very good uh, here early in this ball game. Five carries, 70 yards, and a TD thus far. Benson here makes the best of the worst. It great balance, and he may have another first down as he trips across midfield. Well, that's that zone replay that they like to run. Vincent Young back in the shotgun. He puts it in the belly of. Uh, Cedric and takes a look down. Look at the defensive end. He decides to hand off. He's got the guard pulling around there. Cedric uh, having a little tiptoe there. Get his hand down to get some balance. Good job of making uh, 10 yards and a first down. Well, Benson averaged 113 yards a game last year, third in the Big 12, and it won't be long before he gets that century mark here if they so choose to continue to feed him the football as. This time, Will Matthews gets the carry. Owasa makes the tackle, and he is stopped at the 46-yard line of the green. Well, you talk about Cedric Benson and what his career has done here at the University of Texas. The young man has done a great job of moving up the charts and has a chance to eclipse Earl Campbell, one of the greats of, here at the uh, University of Texas in the rushing charts. I'm coming. I'm Needs a few hundred yards here to accomplish that this year and got his eyes set on that mark. On a Midland lead where he was a three-time offensive player of the year in the 5A classification and a bunch of state titles. Slipping and sliding here. Picked up one or two inside the 45-yard line for Cedric Benson, six foot 225, and Alan Harrison, a sophomore from Big Lake, Texas, makes the stop out of Reagan County. This is what we're talking about with uh, Cedric Benson. That's what he's done through tonight. Actually up to date. Our guys are on top of it here. Just needs a few hundred yards, about 700 yards or so to get Earl Campbell this year. So he gets a thousand yards, which he would like to become that sixth uh, player in NCAA history to have four 1,000 yard rushing seasons. He could be uh, the second uh, all time rusher here at the University of Texas. Seven carries, 82 yards. It's third down and four. Young passes and it is complete you know, at the 39 yard line. That ought to move the chains once more as Bo Scaife. Yeah, that's the other tight end catching a the ball there and Bo getting up right after he catches the ball. He's thinking it's the NFL. I'm not touched till I'm down. Now this is college. You go down, you are stopped right there. Bo Scaife coming across the field, working in on the linebackers and wheeling back out. A little wheel wrap right there and he gets up and starts running. I don't know what the penalty is here. We'll get that sorted out. Maybe an unsportsmanlike conduct as he tossed the football back at the UNT player. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 80 of the offense. 15 yards. Well, is that after the first down or not? It looks like he's got it marked possibly for a first down, and they would mark it back after that. That was a... Uh, Mac Brown wanting an explanation. It's going to be a first down. He got the first down. They're going to uh, mark that post possession, so they're going to reset the chains. Mac is living. In fact, Gary, I don't know if I've ever seen Mac. That upset, at least particularly in this situation of a game on a particular call. Well, Bo Scaife is a guy who's not a, you know, guy who's a hothead or anything. He's just flipping the ball back. He just might have got a little extra juice on it. <laughs> it's not, not anything really bad. So, uh, Mac Brown's trying to stand up for his guys. First and 10 at the 46 now. Uh-oh. The Texas uh -oh. 46, Selvin, or the 
Fits it young, 40, 35. Makes it look so easy. So gets so it all back and more. It says, okay, next next series. Hey, they've been running this all night long here. It's that read play, and hey, read it down there, and then you see that defensive end peek inside. One too many steps right there, and uh-oh, you can't get him. I'm going around you. And Vincent Young, 6'5", comfortable, athletic, moving around the field, decides to go out of bounds here. Look at what he has in front of him. That's why I'm saying, uh-oh, when I see that play happen, because it's tough on the secondary to come off and make tackles on a speedy 6'5 quarterback. Yeah, Tommy Harrison was a defensive end that just shot right in there after Benson said, hey, I'll get him from behind. I'll make a big play. Instead, it goes the other way. Now, here's Benson. They go again. 15 down inside near the 10 yard line. Cedric Benson brought down by TJ Covington. Well, I'm talking about coming into this football game to have balance in the running game with Cedric Benson and Vincent Young. They certainly got that accomplished tonight. Those two a year ago when they were on the field made some special plays. They've got a system here that's working for them. You get in the shotgun, give the quarterback a chance to read. It's tough on defenses when you have to take care of both situations the replay there for the quarterback or the tailback coming through the hole. Vincent Young calls it out. First down and he hands it off again and Benson again follows the lead of that offensive line. Like Tony Hills leading the way. Now let's hear a little bit from Derek Johnson about his good buddy Cedric Benson. Come on the field. He, he, he just we have to play a few defeats while he's out there because uh, it's just, uh, I mean, it's, it's a great experience to be uh, his friend and his teammate. Well, his teammates 112 now. Oh, a fumble here. Benson and Young both falling on it, but Gary, Texas 15 and 0 when Benson rushes for over 100 yards. Well, he's nine for 112 prior to maybe they give that possession to him. And Maybe that's the best form of leadership. I'll tell you, he and Derek Johnson, when they came here four years ago, both were prep star All-Americans, two of the best players in the country. Now they've gone on for four seasons together here to lead this team. They're the two seniors that are the bell cows on both the offense and the defense. Cedric Benson on offense, Derek uh, Johnson on defense, and both of them are great athletes and great leaders for this football team. Third down, ball on the seven. They need six for the first down. Got to throw it in the end zone, and it is complete. Inside? No. They say he was outside the border. Brian Carter, a sensational catch, a junior from the Woodlands. He was covered by Jonas Buckles. That's a tough call there for that back judge trying to make the call on that play. Brian Carter does a nice job of pulling the ball in. Vincent Young throws it out there over the top of the defender, and the one-handed grab comes in. Looks like his knee comes down right on the stripe. I think it's a good, good call there. Not going to go the way here of the fans here at the, at the stadium, but because uh, they're seeing the same replay that we're having here on the Jumbotron. But the knee is definitely on the strike. They're probably a pretty good call. You know, some places they now. wouldn't do that. But by golly, you pay enough money as a fan to come here. You're entitled <laughs> to see what the guy at home is seeing, aren't you? Max thinking, okay, now we've got to kick a fair goal. So Mangum will come on. He had a 37-yarder on the second possession. And he's also been perfect on his PATs. And he sets up. And this one is good as well. So the Longhorns, again, hit on the field goal, and they have scored on every possession, and now lead it 27 to nothing here in the second quarter. We thought we'd show you Bevo 1, <laughs> since we're having a changing of the guard tonight of 13 and 14. The horns are drooping just a little bit, Bill. <laughs> Drag it just a bit. I'll tell you what, his football team is not, as the Longhorns lead it 27 to nothing. And again, Richmond McGee will kick it off. Muzzy and Moore are deep. A flag is thrown back near the kick. Muzzy, 20, 25, out to the 27-yard line. But again, a penalty flag thrown. Interesting here. They're going to be offsides on the kickoff team here. But I think Daryl Dickey might take this, not take the penalty, and take the field position here up over the 25-yard line. Now, offensively here for North Texas, Ramon Flanagan is their offensive coordinator, Bill, and he's the youngest offensive coordinator in Division 1A football, 28 years old. Got to try to find a way to get something going here with this offense, do something against his. It's been a stingy uh, Texas defense so far in this ballgame. 
Yeah, it was pretty obvious early that they wanted to establish what they could with Cobbs, try to get the running game going, keep the clock moving, see if they couldn't get a little field position on their side, saying it's all right to punt. It's just we don't want to do it three and out. Kicking team, five yards from the end of the run, which is a new rule this year. Well, that's one of the new rules, Bill. Take it to the end of the run or you uh, make him kick it over. It's and a choice. As a result, they'll move it out here to the 32-yard line. For an 18-yard return. And North Texas first and 10 as senior quarterback Scott Hall steps under center again. Hall, 4 of 8 for 46 yards in the passing game. Rolls out, now sets up. Going deep, incomplete, just off the hands of Johnny Quinn, and certainly Huff was there, and I think got a finger on it as well. Well, Huff does what I call an undercut technique here, does a good job at the safety position, reading the receiver, reading the quarterback, and waiting for the ball to be thrown. You're going to see number seven come underneath Scott Hall, play action pass here, going to send four receivers in the pattern, and the ball, you see Huff under to come underneath, undercut that ball almost makes an interception for the Longhorns. He had two interceptions for touchdowns last year, one against New Mexico State, one against Nebraska, I believe. And see Hall realizing he just about had one here. Instead, it's second and 10 from the Mean Green 32, trailing 27 to nothing. Hall rolling out after the fake handoff. Texas smelling it and snuffing it out. And Crowder makes the tackle as well as Stiegel there. Well, good job that time by Stiegel, the outside linebacker. He's out on the wide receiver in the slot. It's going to be a, kind of a screen play option here. Hall can't throw it out there because Stiegel throws, you know, covers him up very well. And good job that time by the young linebacker for the Longhorns. So it's third down time again. UNT is four for four. Texas has been three of five in third down efficiency. And a timeout is called here by the main green of North Texas. They will talk it over. We have 9.30, 9.29 to go here in the first half. We'll take a brief timeout. Be right. Well, the Burn Orange with a 27-0 lead here on season opener for Texas and North Texas. Bill Landry, the reasons John Radigan with you as the Longhorns face UNT. UNT third and 11, the ball on its own 31-yard line. Hall out of the shotgun. To Blunt, short and a fumble, and Texas diving on it. It appears, yes. Longhorns get the football back. Fumble caused by, I believe, that number 11, Derek Johnson. Well, active pursuit there to the football. Good job there of going to the ball after it is thrown. Scott Hall throws it to Blunt, the big tight end, who could open in the middle of the field. Defensive pursuit, when you go to the ball and you make a big hit, good things usually happen. That's what happens here for Texas. You see the break here right up there in the front. Good job. Is that Derek Johnson underneath number 11 who knocks it out? Certainly is. And I think Giger is the one that actually came and made the recovery. Scott Hall saying, no. <laughs> Do not like that. Well, and Blunt, I think full well knowing he's a little short of first down yardage, trying to get that extra effort. As a result, Derek Johnson comes in, pops it loose, and Texas takes over first and 10 on its own 44, whether on the UNT 44, and flags everywhere. False start on the offense, number 64. Down remains the same. I was going to say, it's been a pretty clean game for the Texas Longhorns penalty-wise, Gary. Yeah, it has been. Mac Brown doesn't like any mistakes out there for his football team. And saw on that play, trying to run the boot pass. They had it open there. David Thomas is coming around for the, the, tight, the tight end come behind the linebackers. Get that balanced formation with the two tight ends in the game, which is what's in there now. You've got Bo Scape on the right side, David Thomas on the left. A balanced formation here. Quarterback Vincent Young just reading the defense here and calling audible to the line of scrimmage. So it's first and 15 from the 49 now of North Texas. In that two tight end look, Selvin Young gets the opportunity in the UNT defense led by Evan Cardwell, the senior from Hutto, Texas. Comes through to make the tackle. North Texas. Of course, last year they got the pleasure of opening up with Oklahoma. Two years ago they were here. They have not stayed away from anyone. 
And certainly Daryl Dickey says, I, I know the deal. No one uh, changed the schedule when I got here. It's going to help pay for the rest of our program. And he's done a great job of using that to a positive fashion and getting his team ready for the Sun Belt every year. And as a result, they've won that league three years in a row. Vincent Young stopped for a loss on this play in Texas territory at the 47, sacked by Arthur McNack. Well, a couple of good plays here by the North Texas defense, stopping him on the run, then on the quarterback draw here, Vincent Young trying to take it up inside. Defense has to make some plays here. Vincent, this is a design run play here. Good job by the defense of taking it in there. UNT has had six possessions. They have punted it three times, four times. They have fumbled it away twice. Texas has scored on each of its possessions. And this is their sixth here. It's third and 19, though, for the Longhorns. Vincent Young setting up the screen. Selvin Young, 40, and tackled near the 37-yard line. He did not get the first down. But a good-looking play just the same. Walter Priestley made the tackle. Texas fans saying go for it. First screen play here. You see the offensive line going to come out over here and do a good job of getting in front for Selvin Young. Got the first block there. And Selvin, you see the pursuit here by the defense. Good tackle. Come up underneath and stop him short. Bring up that fourth down. 16 yards on the pass play. And it's fourth down and three. And Texas will go for it here at the 37-yard line of North Texas. Carter goes wide left. Jeffrey to the near side, and again, Vincent Young sets up under the center to throw the football, going down to the 15, the 10, and incomplete. A diving attempt made as Bo Skate nearly came up with a great grab. Senior out of Denver, Colorado from Mullen Prep. Yep. Buckles was covered. Well, play action pass here. Good execution. The ball's just a little bit overthrown. Bo Scape, nice effort there. Almost pulls it in, but the ball bounces when he hits the ground and comes away from him. They're happy to have Bo Scape back in the lineup. He's a quality tight end. Missed the season a year ago. Back this year for the Longhorns for his sixth, uh, sixth year here on this campus. And be a big part of that offense. Just a little bit out of his reach. Yeah, he struggled through some injuries, but uh, fighting through it. And very talented player. And Texas now gives it up on downs, and UNT will take over on its own 37 with 7-12 to go in the first half. Hall, the option play, rolls off one, lost the football, Texas recovers it. And Derek Johnson was again in on the play. And the Longhorns get it right back at the 28-yard line. Well, Derek Johnson will tell you, hey, I missed the tackle, but I caused the fumble. Scott Hall, down the line option there, decides to turn it up inside. Number 11, Derek Johnson, take a look. He's going to come right down here and hit the football right there. Scott Hall turns around and drops the football. And Frank Okam, the freshman from Dallas Lake Highlands, comes up with the pickup. Well, actually, that's his other fullback coming in there, hitting the ball on it, and Scott Hall doesn't have a handle on it. And the Longhorns come up with it. <laughs> So UNT, it's third fumble of the night. Across the middle and incomplete. Vince Young trying to come across to tight end Thomas again. Second and 10 as Daryl Dickey looks on and trying to figure what he can get out of his offense. A lot of frustration is where he's at right now. The no touchdowns, no field goals, very little movement with the football, and he obviously the turnovers hurt you, especially against a talented team here in this stadium. Vince Young run five times for 20 yards, past seven of ten for 104. And Texas again knocking on the door. Cedric Benson down near the 11 yard line for the Longhorns before he's brought down by Brandon Monroe. Monroe, one of those linebackers that UNT hoping will step up. He's a freshman from Electra, Texas. And Kenny Evans, the defensive coordinator, was telling us, he goes, you know, he's playing two-way football. And it's a big step from Friday night to Saturday night when there's now 80,000 watching. Well, they do a good job on the tackle here. Cedric mentioned the ball's going to come out. It's going to cause a fumble right there on the hit. The ball comes down a little bit, and the big offensive lineman scoops it up. Nonetheless, a good play there by the Longhorns getting 
running room inside for Cedric Benson. Oh. And it's first and goal from the nine. Vincent Young. They tackled everybody. Benson, anybody that looked like he might have the ball. And Alan Harrison made the stop on the man that did have it, who was Vince Young. Well, that's that replay again. He decides to keep the ball this time, but good job there by the defense. At least one guy gets him, and then the cavalry comes. Pursuit to the football. It's a mark of a good defense. They've had a good defense for North Texas over the last several years, Bill. Good numbers a year ago coming in. Well, and the thing with Vince Young at 6'5", 225, he can afford to run the football. Big, strong guy that he's going to be delivering some of the punishment a lot of times. Second and goal from the nine. The flip to Benson. Got one good block. Ten, five. Did he get in again? Trying to reach to break that plane just shy. Cedric Benson. Well, Harrison Tony made the tackle. Tony Jeffrey, number 12. You're going to like what he does if you're a Longhorn fan. He's one of those returning wide receivers. You're going to see him at the top of the screen come back and get a little angle block. Cabingo right there. <laughs> That's what you do, and Cedric Benson trying to finish it off here with a strong run, gets it down to the one-yard line. Give him some kudos in the tape room a little bit later when they take a look at that play, huh? Might be run back once or twice. Yeah. Third and goal from the one-yard line. Matthews in front of Benson. Thomas back in motion. Benson, and he's in. That There's a flag thrown. Touchdown, Texas, if it stands. Cannon is fired regardless. Penalty decline. Against Touchdown. UNT, obviously decline, and the Longhorns score again. 29 yards, five plays, following the fumble recovery. Now a little power football here, just run it up inside, get your big man running. That's Cedric Benson, the power by that offensive line, gets him that one yard he needs for the score. And Benson, his 49th career touchdown here at Texas, his second tonight. <laughs> Jeffrey, the holder, Mangum, the kicker, and it is good. And the Longhorns, with 5-10 remaining in the second quarter, make it 34 to nothing. 34-0 Texas. Bill and Gary Reasons up top. Let's go down below to John Radigan. I tell you what, Bill, a lot of uh, emotion on these sidelines. The University of Texas, maybe a bit of a sigh of relief when they scored that last touchdown. Believe it or not, both sidelines have come up to me. Someone from each sideline has come up as the kickoff goes now and said, hey, we remember two years ago, it was 27-0. It was 27-0 at halftime two years ago. It was 27-0 at the end of the game. The North Texas players were hoping they could hold it to 27-0 again this year. The Texas players said, we don't think that's going to happen. They have obviously avoided that and thus breathed a little sigh of relief. It's 34-0 now, guys. Mac Brown, a happy bunch. Thank you, John. As his club, they've scored on all but one possession. They turned that one over on downs and very easily could have kicked a field goal if they had so chosen. Meanwhile, Daryl Dickey's seen his club when they have moved it, they've turned it over. Three fumbles lost tonight for UNT. Muzzy's return sets it up at the 23 yard line, where it'll be a first and 10 for the Mean Green. Well, you've got to give you a little bit of a swagger on your offense there for North Texas. They're coming out. Don't have a whole lot of uh, enthusiasm in that offensive huddle right now. Scott Hall doing what he can, clap a little bit, get a little leadership there, a little presence. The senior quarterback needs to get calm these guys down. Hey, you can't beat the foot, this football team you're playing. At least try to do something productive and don't make mistakes. And it won't get easier for North Texas. They got Florida Atlantic to home opener next week, but then they go on the road for two more Big 12s at Colorado and at Baylor. Last year, they pounded Baylor for a big win. Passing on first to 10 and complete to Quinn. The Texas good pursuit and coverage. Well, and also for mean, the Mean Green offense, they've taken Patrick Cobbs out of the football game. But another running back in there, that's Kevin Moore, number 30. Going to be back there at the tailback spot for North Texas. He's a sophomore from Houston out of North Shore High School. Last year, a lot of kick return action, but did carry it 68 times for 267 yards. Don't take anything away from Patrick Cobbs. He's a great running back. He does exactly what the North Texas style of play is, but hey, he's just going up against a great defense here with the Longhorns. Second down and eight. 
Ball at the 25. Hall in trouble as they come after him. It is complete as Blunt got the blunt end of it after making the grab with one hand. Wright was putting the pressure on Hall. In a one yard to the 26. Scott Hall here, get a, little, get a little pressure on him there. He wants to throw it right there. He pulls it down. Then just trying to throw it away. Good pressure there. Roderick Wright up front. He's going to be one of the stalwarts here for this uh, defensive front here for the Longhorns. Expecting to have a have a big year. Preseason uh, Big 12. Yeah, he and Wright creating, rather he and Johnson creating a lot of havoc here in this first half tonight. Third and seven. Johnson's got six tackles and forced two fumbles. A near pick here by Huff. In the secondary, and again, now they're coming after Hall with some pressure as he's trying to throw the football. So for UNT fans, they're saying, hey, why didn't you throw it early? That's why. Well, you look at number 90 here. He's just going to come zing right there inside on Scott Hall and pretty good shot on him. Doesn't have a chance to really look from way downfield. So UNT will punt it away again tonight. The fifth punt of the night. The other three possessions, they turned it over with fumbles. So Brad Cadlebar comes on. He's averaging 38.8 in the kicking game tonight. Selvin Young again is the deep man. Nearly blocked it. Poor kick. Good roll for UNT. It rolls inside the 30 to 25 yard line and Texas will take over on its own 25 yard line. Good pressure on the kick and may have got a touch on it. Let's see. Well, number 21, Eric Foreman. I think he's actually a backup quarterback or defensive back. Almost gets him one there. And a 48-yard kick officially. Trying to make a play. That would have been pretty special for the young man. Everybody looking for playing time. Foreman doing his best. Texas offense, seven possessions. Four TDs, a couple of field goals. And now with four minutes to go in the half, you know they like nothing better than to march it right down for seven more. Vince Young slides another seven. Young needs to beat a man. Got one block, steps forward, 30, and dives out near the 35-yard line. Covington covering on the play. Well, misdirection screenplay, try to fake it to the wide side and just toss it back to Selvin Young here on the short side. Pump left, throw it back right to number three. And what he does here, he has patience. Wait for your blockers to get there. Good job. He waits for that one. Gets up the field here. Another block and pretty good positive play there on the screen. Nine yards on the pickup. It leaves him a second and one. And this usually means a little bit of excitement offensively. Instead, they'll, the mundane. And a fumble up the middle and UNT. Well, we haven't seen it yet. Looks like Texas maintains possession as Awasom caused the fumble and then is recovered by Enar, the wide receiver, Eric Enar. And off inside here to Matthews. The ball pops out right there at the Ball's end. Awasom does cause the fumble, Bill. Enar comes up with it, as you said. Texas over 300 yards in total offense right now. They averaged last year 439 a game, 20, number 20 in the country. And North Texas defensively last year, allowing just 104 yards rushing per game. 324 total. We'll not get that up here in the first half. Young in trouble, unloads it and throws it away. Good pressure by UNT as they contained him that time. Oh, that's what you can do when you're 6'5 and you're strong and athletic. Vincent Young there under duress. Looks like he's going to go down with the sack, but he has enough presence of mind to just throw the ball down the field and away and avoid that loss. Good job by the quarterback. Brandon Monroe put the pressure on there, forcing him to hurry that pass and get rid of it. Texas no worse for the wear though second and ten now ball on the 44 of the Longhorns clock at 237 in the first half remaining three wideouts two to the top of your screen one to the bottom Vince Young operates out of the shotgun Selvin Young 
across the 50 and down to the 47, maybe the 48 yard line. We'll see where they mark it. Sean Early makes the tackle, a junior from Jacksonville, Texas. That's what you do in uh, between plays. Get a little exercise on the bike. Ryan Carter. Didn't get his workouts in this week, Bill, so they said, go ahead, and get on the bike. Get your little roll in action there. I thought that was you that was going <laughs> to throw him off of there. Say you missed one yesterday. Uh, I definitely missed my workout yesterday. <laughs> we'll get it in the night post game. Just a different variety. North Texas trying to stop Texas. They're three of seven and third downs. Make it four of eight. Selvin Young, 20, 15, 10. Young, he's in. Touchdown, Texas. A great run. on the play. Well, one of the things that Mac Brown, Greg Davis talk about for their offense is explosive plays, and this is certainly explosive in the run game. Anytime they have a rush over 12 yards, they consider it an explosive play, a 16-yard or more pass play, it's explosive. Selvin Young, Cedric Benson, Vincent Young, all of them making those explosive plays tonight for the Longhorns. 40 to nothing, and Selvin Young, seven carries, 78 yards, two touchdowns. Mangum point after, and he hits it straight through again, 41 zip. So Selvin Young gets a congratulations, and yeah, the explosive plays could abound for Texas this year. They have so many people that are capable of it. Well, they, they talk about, they chart plays, offensively, defensively, explosive plays. Hey, and they're not, what is it, 9-0, and Bill, or some tremendous number. 34-0 when they have combined winning the turnover battle and the explosive plays. That's a great stat, and that's something that they mark their offense and defensive performance on. Selvin Young showing why he's a guy that they look to here at the University of Texas to have a bright, bright future. Came on the scene a year ago and did the kick return duty, spot duty in the running back position, but right now selling in very well alongside Cedric Benson. Selvin Young out of Jersey Village as Mac Brown. Oh, he's got to be pleased, I'll tell you. Texas. Just manhandling UNT, and we're, and we're we're not trying to sugarcoat. It's a very good UNT ball club. This is a veteran team. It's been picked to win the Sun Belt Conference for a fourth consecutive year, and Texas has had an answer for anything UNT has tried. And meanwhile, the Mean Green. They're lacking any kind of momentum at all right now and just trying to get back into the house for halftime. Well, really the biggest question mark about Texas and its offense in particular was the wide receivers. Haven't had a chance to even get to the wide receiver play in this ball game because they've run the ball so well here on the, on the offensive side of the ball. And the kickoff by McGee. And Muzzy is stopped near the 21-yard line, and that's where UNT will get possession with 152 to go here in the first half. Texas rushing the ball tonight, Bill. 30 rushes for 258 yards. That's a huge accomplishment for that offense here in just the first half alone. Cedric Benson, obviously a big part of that, having a good good running uh, effort tonight. And see Selwyn Young taking a little break there on the sideline. First and 10 at the 21 for North Texas. Another shotgun, Hall. And the pass incomplete. Right through the hands that time of Kevin Howard, a senior out of Dallas Carter High School. Well, and you mentioned, Garrett, the receivers. So what do you do if you're Mac Brown? You're up 41 nothing. You want to work in your passing game. But on the other hand, it looks like you're rubbing it in if you go get some easy scores by throwing the football. You know, I think most coaches understand that you're just trying to operate, not trying to run things up. Mac Brown realizes, hey, we got to go out there and get some work, and we're going to play and play effectively. And he's very pleased with how well his team has performed tonight. But uh, he wants these guys to go out there and get better each snap they're out there. Scott Hall down the middle. Muzzy hammered and incomplete. Texas Huff covering on the play. 
Well, Michael Huff settled in nicely there at the free safety spot, just reading the throw of uh, Scott Hall. We saw him try to undercut earlier in the ball game and try to get an interception. That ball was right there up for grabs, and Huff makes a nice break on it, breaks up the throw. at the 21 for UNT. Hall again out of the shotgun. Keeps the football. Now pitches. Oh, mother. What a load hit Kevin Moore. Goodness gracious. Is that Brown that hit him? That was Terrell Brown, yes. number five on the outside. Watch how late Scott Hall pitches his ball. Late, 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 late. And then Brown right there on Moore for the tackle. That's a big hit. Kevin Moore fortunate to just hang on to the football as Tell Brown, the sophomore from Mesquite North, six foot 185, laid it on it. Fourth and 13, and North Texas will punt it again as this time Cadlebar stands inside his own five. Looks like Ross is deep to return this one as Selvin Young getting a breather and it rolls out of bounds. We hesitate because there's two 31s for Texas. Aaron Ross, I believe, was the deep man on that. Matters little now as Texas will get possession with 43 seconds to go. Well, Matt Brown, you look at him, a little bit different than he came here seven years ago, but I tell you, the production that he's had over the course of time, uh, a lot of pressure here in college football, a lot of pressure at the University of Texas. There are some people that even talk about possibly Matt Brown, if they don't win it all this year, that uh, he'd be in jeopardy here, but that is so far from the truth because he is in entrenched here. He's done so well in the community, so well at the university, and so well financially to support everything that's grown at the University of Texas. They're very, very pleased with Mac Brown and what he's done. You know, Bill, one little stat here. You see this immense stadium here that uh, we have in front of us here, and all the fans and everyone coming here. Since Mac Brown has come here, they have increased ticket sales, 27,000 season tickets since Mac Brown has set foot on campus. That's a tremendous feat, and it's a it's a credit to him and what he's put here in this program. Yeah, those that think that. Uh, he is on some hot seat are just absolutely nuts. That's all you can say that uh, and uh, he is entrenched and should be for what he has done here with this program is Texas once again one of the top 10 in the country young across the middle and complete out to the 47 yard line and complete to Carter junior out of the woodlands clock 31 seconds now remaining as they move the chains and then they'll restart yeah, just to hurry up here they're not using the timeouts but they're trying to do the hurry up drill here get to vincent young a chance to use that here at the end of this first half texas leading 24 nothing at the end of the quarter 41 zip now after that 16 yard play little flip to cedric benson he tight ropes out of bounds near the 49 yard line stops the clock with 20 seconds sean early on the play well, obviously, well in front of this ball game, 41 to nothing. But this is the drill that you want to do for your football team. Put your offense out there in a two-minute drill against another opponent instead of yourselves. A chance to work on this thing. You know, it's not something they're trying to call timeouts and really do something against North Texas. More, they're just trying to work on the fundamentals of their two-minute drill into the half drill where they're trying to move the ball down the field. Well, you do find it hard to believe that Texas without 19 seniors from last year's 10 and 3 bunch because this group has looked like a well-oiled machine as a timeout is called here with the final seconds of the first half. Bill Lamb, Gary Reasons, John Radigan with you. Want to remind you to stick around with us. Uh, Halftime will, among other things, visit with the Las Dodds, the athletic director, who has certainly been instrumental in Texas rise to prominence in so many sports, not just football. We'll also uh, have a little interview with Mac Brown that some of you had the opportunity to catch a few weeks ago on Big 12 Showcase, where we talk a little bit about 
Mac's career and why he ended up here at Texas and some of the people that he's followed. You saw Dick Tomey there just briefly in the picture, the uh, one-time head coach at Arizona, and uh, boy, he's been a nice presence here coming in as a newcomer. Yeah, a little different presence, obviously different perspectives with the 49ers a year ago as a consultant, and Matt Brown brought him in here to work with his defensive ends, works with the defensive side of the ball with, uh, with Greg Robertson and Dwayne Aquino, the co-coordinators. They're on the defensive side, and Matt Brown likes the NFL mentality that these guys bring to his football team. A little bit different preparation on how they prepare, and uh, it's, it's a good fit. Second down and eight. Vince Young steps up into the pocket, now zips it to the sideline, and getting out of bounds with a first down in hand is Bo Scaife. Clock stops with 13 seconds. Now they get the first down, it's out of bounds, so they're moving the ball effectively without using the timeouts. Good job here by uh, Vincent Young running this drill. You know, Vincent Young didn't start last year until the seventh game of the season. Went six and one as a starter. He has made huge strides, though, in his play. First and 10, ball at the 40. Texas now 400 yards of total offense on 47 plays in this first half. Incredible. Young, complete to Jeffrey. Out of bounds with 10 seconds to go. Well, it all looks good there up front here for Vincent Young. Obviously, what the reason he's able to throw the ball is the protection. Look at the offensive line play. They're picking up the North Texas stunts here. Everybody in there. The pocket, the pressure. Look at the presence that he has here. Nobody really getting in the way for, sell, uh, excuse me, for Vincent Young to throw the football. Young is 12 of 18 in the air tonight, 147 yards. Benson's run for 141 on 12 carries. Selvin Young scored a couple of touchdowns to boot. Again, complete with about five seconds and did not get out of bounds. They call a timeout. Yes, they do with two seconds to go. And they're gonna trot the field goal unit on here to try a long field goal. Close to 48 yards or so, Bill, 49. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna mark it at the 35 or 31, you're right. And so about a 48 yarder. Well, his current drive, 38 yards, took six plays, 41 seconds. As Texas will see. If it can tack on three more, 41 nothing. Longhorns leading UNT. And certainly 80,000 that showed up here tonight expected a Texas win and expected a good performance. I don't know if anyone, including Matt Brown, expected to just dominate a good UNT team the way they have. Well, all the performance that the, the offense have had here, running the football with the balance with uh, Young and Young and Benson, uh, it's been pretty impressive. Mac Brown has got to be pleased primarily with those guys, but the offensive line doing the blocking and getting the holes for those guys to operate is really what's been the key to this football game. All right, we'll see what they set up here as it should be a 48 yarder for the Texas Longhorns. Dusty Mangum. Last year, his longest was 45 yards. His freshman year, he had a 51 yard against North Carolina. From 48 yards out, Jeffrey Holden, good snap, good hold. And Mangum's kick is long enough, and it is good like everything else that Texas has done this half. Wow, what a first half performance by the Longhorns. And Mangum getting congrats as if he just won the Big 12 championship. That's a big kick, 48 yards. And let's go down to John Radigan, where it's got to be a pretty happy Mac Brown. No doubt about that, Mac. You had to over 50 plays, over 400 yards, almost a perfect offensive performance in the first half. Well, the guys did a good job, and our defense started it with three and outs, and, and we had them into the win, so we jumped out 17 nothing quickly. And uh, they're a team that has more trouble when they get from behind because they're not a drop-back passing team. So uh, we kind of put them behind the eight ball to start with. What we've got to do is two years ago, we were sitting here 27 nothing. They outplayed us the second half where this team needs to grow up, so we need to learn to play with the lead. And that's what you go tell them now. It's exactly what we tell them. Still got 30 minutes. We need to play hard. That's great. We appreciate it, Mac. Thank you very much. That's Mac Brown. His team up 44 to nothing. Bill, back upstairs to you. And Bevo won. That'll be a little perkier than that with that performance. <laughs> 44 nothing. Thank you, John, and thanks to Mac Brown.
Halftime, we'll visit with Mac. We visit a showcase interview and find out a little bit more behind the scenes of Mac Brown when we come back here in Austin. The only show in the Southwest to bring you one. Longhorns, 44 nothing at the half. Bill Ryan, Gary Reasons, John Raddick and the crew with you here. And we'll have a chance to take a look at the drive charts of the first half. And certainly uh, in an all-Texas performance, take a look here at how things went. And you can see Texas scoring on every possession in the first quarter, Gary. Well, that's the first quarter. You see the one, two, three marks here in the end zone. Good job there by the Longhorns getting things going. That's exactly how uh, Matt Brown wanted to start this football game. The defense did their part as well, stopping North Texas three times in that first quarter. And then in the second quarter for the Texas Longhorns, and again, Magnum a 23-yard field goal. They did turn the ball over on downs one time before scoring their last three possessions. Obviously, just a great performance off for Texas in the first half and coming out getting the ball to start the second half as well. And the kickoff out of bounds. It'll be Texas taking over near the 30. Let's take a look at uh, the first half stats that are absolutely just mind boggling when you take a look at what didn't they dominate? Well, overall total yards. That's what you have to look at there. 409 yards for the Longhorns. Doing a great job on defense against North Texas, allowing only 55 yards. Time of possession huge. They've been on the field a long time. That offense has for the for Longhorns, and they've had a lot of production for it as well, and 44 points to show for it. And Texas, first and 10 from its own 29-yard line to start the second half. Young, 40, 45, 50, and Young sheds another tackler down to the 40-yard line. Vince Young tackled by Michael Pruitt, the senior from El Reno, Oklahoma, that is. That's a zone read play again here to start this uh, second half, and... Vince Young fakes it inside to Cedric Benson, turns around the corner, and the speed of the 6'5 quarterback just takes over, does a good job of eluding the cornerback, turns it up inside. Nice game here to start the second half. And now 33 yards on the pickup for Vince Young. He's now got seven carries for 53 yards out of the shotgun. Plenty of time. Ball tipped. And incomplete falls near the 22-yard line. Let's take a look at what's been going on in the Big 12 today. As, of course, Thursday night, A&M upended in Utah, 41-21. Oklahoma, a good Bowling Green team, stayed with them for a while. Sooners win handily, though, by 16. Iowa State blanking Northern Iowa. I think that was a good start for those guys up yeah. there. Dan McCarney needing a victory of any kind. Oklahoma State goes to the coast and beats the Euclids. At the Rose Bowl, 31-20. Baylor being hammered by UAB. Watson Brown, of course, the coach of UAB, the brother of Matt. A lot of running game in the Oklahoma State game as well. Now let's see for uh, the Oklahoma State Cowboys getting it down on the ground. Benson on the carry here. We'll go back to the scoreboard for you. Tulsa and Kansas, 3-3 in the third in Lawrence. Missouri putting it on Arkansas State. Of course, Brad Smith, a Heisman hopeful for the Tigers. And K-State getting a run for their money from Western Kentucky, Gary. Well, that's a little surprising there. K-State, obviously a quality football team in Colorado, taking the early lead in the second quarter. And Texas Tech and SMU going in front of a full house in Dallas. And uh, Morrency, I believe, ended up for Oklahoma State. 262 yards rushing. UCLA had no answer for that game. UNT has no answer for that man as Benson rattles it down inside the 10 to near the six-yard line before Markeith Knowlton makes the tackle. It's going to be a fun year of Big 12 football. Looking forward to working with you again, Gary. Well, that's going to be a lot of fun this year, and we're going to see a lot of great games and a lot of great players. And starting here tonight with Cedric Benson, Vincent Young, Selvin Young, a lot of talented players here. Derek Johnson for this Longhorn bunch. And uh, I tell you, they're uh, trying to set their sights on a championship season for, uh, for this year. like to win that Big 12 championship. And obviously, you know, their eyes and their goals here at the University of Texas are huge, and that would be a national championship. It's something that the you know, these players are all working hard for. And as a senior, Cedric Benson would like to have that very much. Fumble as Young tries to hand off to Benson, and Vince falls back on it. Benson, 14 carries, 173 yards now. A lot of big plays, too. We call them explosive plays. At least the Texas Longhorns coaching staff does. Take a look at what they've done here. Explosive plays, runs, 12 yards more, eight of them tonight, passes, three of them tonight. They look for nine, get nine of those in a game. And tonight they had nine in the first half alone. So, so far, so good. Good offensive performance by the Longhorns. And obviously winning the turnover battle as UNT fumbled it over to him twice or three times in the first half tonight. Second and goal from the 10-yard line. 
And again, the handoff and scrambling. Benson saw that opening, couldn't quite make it. Jonas Buckles makes the tackle, the senior out of Houston from Yates High School. I look at Cedric Benson, Bill, and I see a smoother runner this year. Last year, it seemed like he was banging it in there. A little heavier. He came in about 225, I think, a year ago. Now he's about 215 to 218. Looks sleeker, looks quicker through the hole, and I think that's going to help him throughout this year. Six carries, or the six plays 69 yards on this opening drive in the second half, and it's third and goal from the two yard line. Enard wide left. The pass going that direction and is complete. And Matthews with a reception and the touchdown. Will Matthews. And Texas with Matthews getting his second touchdown of the night. His first on a receiving end. Bumps it to a half a hundred. And they just split the eye backs there and fullback goes out to the flat, catches the ball and powers it into the end zone. Couple of Eagles there tried to knock him back, but uh, the big fullback scored for the Longhorns. They open the third quarter with a seven play, 71 yard drive. Dusty Mangum had the 48 yard to end the half. Now for the point after, and he's been perfect on all of those tonight. And connects here to make it 51 nothing Longhorns and 12 14 remaining in the third quarter. Everybody's got to be in shape around here, not just the football team, as they're going to count them off 51 Texas, zero North Texas. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, John Radigan back with you here in Austin. The Longhorns kick it off after taking the opening drive in for an easy touchdown. And it'll be down in the end zone by Kevin Moore. So first and 10 from the 20. Well, we talked about explosive plays. Matt Brown had some comments on explosive plays for the Longhorns. There's a chance to score every time they touch it. And in talking to our defensive coaches, and especially two from the NFL coming in here, they feel like it puts so much pressure on the defense uh, to make sure that they take care of every gap on every play. They certainly have the playmakers this year. There is little question with the depth that they have offensively. Moore shed one tackler and turns it into positive move as he rolls to the outside in the North Texas sideline for he's knocked out of bounds after a pickup of near five yards. Again, Patrick Cobbs, the, uh, the leading rusher in NCAA last year, returning from last year out of the ball game. Uh, and let Moore take the load here, looks like, for, for the mean green at the tailback spot. Cobbs obviously had uh, hampered by that thumb injury and wearing that soft cast tonight, as John Radigan talked about earlier. Didn't have a whole lot going for him. Didn't have a chance to get on track, so uh, looks like you're going to go with more. Cobbs, eight carries, minus one in the rushing category. All of those early on the first couple of possessions and has not been back in since. Man in motion is blunt on a pitch out second and five. Tackle by Giger. Philip Giger's made some nice plays from the free safety spot tonight as Kevin Moore, the sophomore from Houston North Shore, is brought down. It'll be third down and five. Third and make it about three, I beg your pardon. Officially third and two. There we go. Well, it's a big third down here for, uh, for North Texas. Get a first down here, get some positive yardage here. Stay on the field offensively. Let the defense rest a little bit. They haven't had an answer for uh, the Longhorns offense. Scott Hall will bring him out. Defense the fans saying bring it up here. Meanwhile, newcomers loosening up on the sideline. Timeout, Scott Hall with 11-22. Eleven twenty two to go and a timeout is called by the mean green and Daryl Dickey a long night getting longer with it 51 nothing the Texas Longhorns here. well on his way in the season opener back to the action here what's third and two and the completion to blunt he's got the first down and they'll mark it near the 44 yard line of UNT Michael Huff covering on the play looks like a pretty good combination blunt and Hall teaming up here tonight three or four passes together and good job throwing the ball there on the boot pass to the tight end getting the first down importantly here for North Texas 
16 yards on the play. First and 10 at the 44 of UNT. Again, more of the tailback, and they give it to him. Sprints right up the middle to midfield and is popped there by Giger. A good hole there up front that time. Well, Texas opened it pretty well, and speedy tailback got through there. Philip Giger put a pretty good lick on, though. You know, North Texas, uh, we mentioned earlier, uh, not new to playing big-time opponents on the road. L last year, for example, they lost in Oklahoma 37-3, that monsoon that uh, we were a part of up there, Gary. And then they bounced right back to hammer Baylor 52-14, to and then lost on the road at Air Force and at Arkansas, and then went on the big winning streak to take the Sun Belt title, going unbeaten before falling to Memphis in the New Orleans Bowl. So... You would expect this team to even bounce back in the second half and show a much better, uh, not necessarily effort, but just uh, something for their effort than what they had in the first half because they've been a resilient bunch over the years. Well, when John Radigan talked to uh, Daryl Dickey, he asked him, you know, says, hey, you know, what are you going to do in the second half? What'd you tell the players? And he said, hey, we're looking for character. We're looking for guys who are going to play football for the full 60 minutes. And he really means that because he's taking players that are young, inexperienced here to, to Texas in a hostile environment where you have to perform. And he thinks that that breeds success for them later on in their conference play and it's been done he's done great for the last three years winning the conference each year third and five hall pump fake incomplete nearly picked off cedric griffin had a shot at it junior from san antonio holmes well scott hall throws the ball out there it's tipped a little bit and uh, griffin thought he's going to have an easy catch but uh Another stop on downs here for the Texas defense after the first down. Cadlebar will boot it away. Selvin Young is back in as the punt returner. He stands at the 10. There is Brad Cadlebar, who uh, certainly a busy man in the first half. Six punts for 42 yards per kick. High, booming punt here. Young showing fair catch. I thought he did. Apparently did not. Ball went into the end zone. No flag thrown as he was rocked pretty good. Right, he's finally going to throw a penalty there. There's a late flag coming on the play. What he does, he's actually faking the catch because he doesn't make an attempt to catch the ball. Interesting to see what, how they're going to officiate this. I think Philip Graves, number 36, the linebacker, was the man that hit him. It's a 51-yard punt. Yeah, he did not signal fair catch, but he faked as if he was going to field the football. Personal foul on the kicking team, number 36, hitting a defenseless player 15 yards from the uh, succeeding spot, which will be put well, on the 35 yard. Personal foul hitting a defenseless player. He's not fairing, hitting a fair catch, but he's obviously not anywhere trying to catch the football. But you know what? The guy running down the field doesn't know that. He looks like he's trying to catch the ball, but the official is trying to protect him here with the penalty. Kind of a, kind of a crazy call. Salvin Young, no worse for the wear. Texas will take advantage field position-wise. The ball at the 35 following the penalty. Chance for the new quarterback comes in, and the first handoff comes off to Selvin Young. They're going to get a face mask bill on the sideline. Buckles with the tackle. Matt Nordgren now, the quarterback for the Longhorns. Big 6'5 player. On the defense, it's his number one. Shot. Five yards from the end of the run, still first down. No chance mock started, as you talked about earlier, Bill. The first uh, seven games last year for the Longhorns. Young man who's also a backup quarterback here now for Texas. Had some ankle injury problems, and so Norgren getting a chance to junior quarterback here, a chance to, to drive the ship, so to speak. Wait on us. First to 10 at the 35. First of one and a run right up the middle. That'll move the chains for the first down. 
So, Mac Brown, take a look at his club saying, all right, Vince Young got plenty of time in this first half and then the start of the second half. You got 51 points. You don't want to pour it on on one hand. You also don't want to risk injury here either, do you, Gary? No, I think Vince Young had a great night tonight. Threw the ball effectively, ran the ball effectively. He had a lot of comfort, a lot of control out there. The poise that I think that uh, Matt Brown talked about was on display tonight. He's grown up quite a bit from his uh, freshman campaign. Hand off to Selvin Young. Loss on the play. Back near the 43-yard line. Selvin Young, Gary. So got a bunch of new offensive linemen in there as well, trying to get some guys some quality time, some experience here in this football game. 828 and counting here in this third quarter for the University of Texas. Norgren last year played in five games as the number three quarterback, was one of two in passing for six yards. Put some action against Baylor on the rollout here, and he completes it to Selvin Young. Young slips the tackle across the 50. Back near first down territory on a second and 13 play. T.J. Covington makes the tackle. Bring up about a third and six, I think, Bill. If you're wondering about Chance Mock, the senior has fought a little bit of an ankle problem this year, and Chance here to get Norgren some valuable playing time. But boy, what a break to get extended playing time, Gary, against a quality opponent. Yeah, good defense. I mean, the North Texas is no no uh, poor defense out there. They just going into an explosive team right now. Just uh, got everything going for them. He avoided one defender. Now scampers out of bounds, and a flag is thrown back behind him on the run. He did not get the first down on the run. It was a third and six. Initial call is holding against the offense, against the Longhorns. Going to be short of the first down where he stepped out of bounds. Uh, North Texas could choose to, to refuse this penalty and bring up a fourth down. Holding number 78 of the offense. That penalty is declined. And that's what will happen. We'll bring up fourth and about, uh, about six yards. Oh, so the punting game, something we haven't seen from Texas thus far, as Richmond McGee, the punter, last year averaged 40.9, and also does the kickoff duties. Junior from Garland stands on his 35-yard line. And he gets this one off. They will let it bounce. Texas will down it inside the 25-yard line, and that's where UNT will take over with 7-10 remaining here in the third quarter. It's all Longhorns, 51. Missed a nine-yard pickup here for UNT as Hall brings him out on a second down and one. The ball at the 32-yard line, and a quick hitting play here as they go to Moore. He is upended and is short of the first down on a second and one. Boy, pretty good pop by Eric Hall, number 49 there. Hitting more right at the line of scrimmage. Not going not to allow him the first down, playing off the block. Just in case he was going to miss him, Derek Johnson came flying through. D Derek was the flyby, huh? That's right. Watch number 11 flyby there from the outside, knocking the helmet loose. All kinds of things. Third down and one now for UNT. And you can tell this Texas defense has not lost a bit of its fire. They're wanting to shut him down right here. More again, the carrier. Aaron Harris, the junior out of Mesquite North, making the tackle. Well, the Texas defense 
Greg Robinson coming in here from we're talking about the NFL. You see Coach Tommy also there has been a big help. And he both of them talk about just what a great combination they have with their staff, Gary. They really do. They think that uh, everything is kind of in place for them here. They're working well together. He said the kids have bought into the change, small changes that they've made here, and uh, a little bit of a different attitude. And these guys are showing that uh, they've got a lot of uh, capabilities as a defensive unit here, playing very, very well tonight, and got some depth. And they're getting that depth, a little experience here as well. Well, they forced the punt situation, it would appear. Ross is the deep man this time. Aaron Ross on a fourth and one, less than one. Officially at the 33-yard line. Cadlebar just did get it off. They came after him pretty good. Ross, 25, 35, 40, and scrambling across the 41. Get your opportunities, better make the most of them. That's what some of these guys are finding out here in the second half for Texas. And a timeout is called with 5.01 to go in the third quarter. 51-0 long. Mac Brown out visiting with Matt Nordgren, his quarterback, who's come on to replace Vince Young. You see why with this one well in hand. Bill and Gary Reasons and John Radigan with you. Texas at the moment, 409, 490 yards of total offense. North Texas, 93. As Norgren, Selvin Young beside him in the backfield. Two receivers to the top, one to the bottom, and Texas first and 10 from its 41. And again, Norgren keeps 40, 35, 30. Big fella shows he knows what to do with it at 6'5", 232 out of Bishop Lynch High School in Dallas. Well, good job reading that play that Vincent Young does so well. It's his own read. He's reading the defensive end. You're going to come in with my dive back. I'm going to pull the ball, run around the corner. Number seven on the offensive side. Looks like he's got some wheels also. He's got number seven on the defensive side as well. That being Cedric Huff. Knowlton made the stop. A lot of double numbers here in Texas. You've got to be careful before you throw a name out there. There is the rushing story tonight. Wow. Michael Huff, excuse me, and number seven for the defense. Norgren and whistle stops the play before it develops showing a handoff to Selvin Young. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense, number 79, five yards, remains first down. Texas now with 522 yards of total offense. Penalty will push it back for first and 15. Ball on the 32. Young right up the middle. Breaks another one. Drags one with him across the 15 to the 14 yard line. An 18 yard pickup before Marquise Knowlton makes the tackle. Well, they parted the defensive tackles that time right up the middle of the field. Watch the cross block here. It's the counter gap action that you've seen so much, but it opens up inside. Sutherland Young doesn't bring it around the corner. Good job that time by the Longhorns offense, picking up everybody on the defensive side and another explosive play here for Texas. First and 10 at the 14 of North Texas. Now Selvin Young over 100 yards. Well, actually, 100 on the nose. 11 carries for him and two scores. Matthews with a couple of touchdowns. Benson a couple. Selvin Young slides forward, picks up a couple. It's interesting variations of how people have gone and to use that kind of counter, counter blocking that uh, the Redskins in the late 80s, or early 80s started to use. It's that backside guard and tackle. They pull in front and the Longhorns are using it here with a shotgun and they're handing it off inside to Selvin Young or Cedric Benson or the quarterback is taking it. A lot of different variations, a lot of smart coaches out there you know, trying to do different wrinkles to confuse defenses. And Young gets a breather here. But Taylor's coming the ball game here. And the handoff to him. And he squirts forward, nearly getting a touchdown on his first touch. So you get 
Benson gets his 181 and two scores. You get Selvin Young over the century mark and two scores. And then Taylor's first carry, watch out. Well, he thinks he's going to the house on this one. Good pancake block inside. One of the big offensive linemen did a good job there. And then Taylor here trying to stretch it out, gets to about the two. First and goal on the two yard line. And they bull forward. No signal yet as wait and see as they unpile. As Hardy was getting the carry here. Albert is first run of the night. He's a sophomore from Houston Galena Park. Daryl Dickey looking on. Hoping his club will learn something from this one here tonight. One thing you better learn, you better keep after it because if not, it'll really get out of hand. Touchdown here, Norman carries it in. And that makes it 57 to nothing. The second score in the second half for Texas as Norgren gets on the board in the scoring column. Yeah, a little power here to get the offensive line going. Norgren didn't even wait for the center to move. He says, I'm going to take this one right in myself. And the old orange into the end zone once again. A little extra double duty here now over Norgren. Holding for the PAT. Three yards officially on the touchdown run. And that'll bring on Mangum, as Gary mentioned, Norgren to hold here for the PAT. Make your pardon, Pino, the substitute kicker, is coming in, and he takes care of business as well and makes it 58 to nothing. Let's go down to John Radigan with former Texas basketball great TJ Ford. How about that, TJ Ford here at the game? And uh, TJ Ford enjoying this, aren't you, TJ? 58 to nothing. Of course, I'm enjoying it. I'm glad that they're getting off to a good start to get the fans back on their side with the tough season that they had last year. Every Texas fan was so scared and nervous for you when you went down. You had to miss basically the last part of the NBA season this year. You've been rehabbing. How is your How's your neck? Everything's been going as well. I mean, we're right on schedule as far as the rehabbing it with the surgery went well and just really put, uh, taking our time, making sure that I'm 100% before I come back. So we're not really trying to rush anything because, you know, the NBA season is very long. So I want to make sure that I have a long career. Do you think you'll be there for the start of training camp or will maybe be delayed a little bit? I'm not really sure. You know, as of right now, they're not giving me any dates or any time period where I'll be back. So it's all up to the doctors and what they feel my health is at the time. I know one of the things you're doing here in Austin right now is basically launching in this area the TJ Ford Foundation. Uh, that must be very special. Well, it's something that we've been in the making for the past year. And it's something that, you know, I want to be a part of and have people know that I'm going to give back to the community and do much as possible. As far as tonight, I um, have a party on 6th Street tonight prior to the football game and some of the donations, well, most of the donations going, you know, to help some type of some type of kid or pretty much to help donate back to the community. So basically you donate back to the Houston community, the Austin community, the Milwaukee community. You're really spreading the wealth a lot. Well, I like to do a lot of community work because, you know, as a kid, I want to be able to be touchable or be reachable to kids and just let them know that, you know, I, I still feel like I'm a, like a regular person. I'm no bigger than anyone else. Great stuff, TJ. Thanks very much. Good luck in the rehab. That is TJ Ford enjoying a Longhorn victory, guys. Thank you, John. Nothing regular about him. What a sensational player. He was here and is now in the NBA. He's wishing the best in his health. Moore with the run and a flag thrown on the return as he gets it out near the 30-yard line. And the tackle by Griffin. Marcus Griffin with the stop after a 15-yard return. We'll see if it stands. That basketball program here at the University of Texas, that's pretty special also, Bill. Yeah, Rick Barnes is, uh, well, when he got T.J. Ford to put him over the top Outside. two, they had some great players, but he got him there in that final four. Number 30, five yards from the end of the run, first down. And the overall excellence of this Texas program is something that uh, is just about unsurpassed anywhere in the country with everything from facilities to athletes to people like T.J. Ford who then come back to give again to a school that has given them so much. And the new quarterback is Joey Byerly. He is a bigot. They list him at 6'4", 254. Byerly keeping it on his first opportunity gets back to near the line of scrimmage at the 34 yard line stopped by Robert Killebrew a redshirt freshman from Spring Texas out of Klein High School 
And there's the numbers on Byerly from Orange, Texas. Byerly, it looks like he's checking his wrist for some plays there, Gary. Well, he's he probably reading that wrist brand, make, want to make sure that he calls everything correctly. Not as polished as a Scott Hall, who's uh, been out of that center quite a bit. Freshman in there. Big kid, though, as you talked about, Bill, and I think they're, they're pretty excited about his future. Yeah, certainly a, a raw one who's getting broken in here in Austin. And flag is going to be thrown here. On the offense, five yards. Down remains the same. Well, you find out, guess what, son? If you can handle it here, you'll certainly handle it in the Sun Belt. No and doubt you, about that. And you never know when you're needed because uh, we talked about the remembering of Andrew Smith, the uh, UNT quarterback who was tragically killed in the automobile accident. He got a big start here of coming in for an injured Scott Hall two years ago and helped lead that team. Now, Byerly in trouble, escapes the couple, passes deflected, nearly intercepted. You know, it was Robert Killebrew again, number 40, playing a weak side linebacker, yeah. just pursuing and almost comes up with a huge play. The ball hits him in the chest and bounces back. Byerly trying to just get out of harm's way and throw the football down the field with uh, Killebrew, number 40. I mean, I've known for a long time, played with my son in high school down in the Klein, Texas area. Good to see Robert uh, continue his career here with the Longhorns. And by the way, a congrats to your son, Nick, part of Nickel State, and their season opening win over against Eastern Washington the other night. It's fun to see these young men grow up and uh, launch their college football careers, and you know it's a lot of fun for these guys, and it builds character, and that's what these coaches are all about, building character with these young men, and they'll remember these experiences for the rest of their lives. Third and 16, and the pass is complete out in the flat. And then the tackle made as catching the football for UNT. Mitchell. And making the stop was Michael Griffin. Well, you just see here on defense now that uh, the Longhorns, they have all their substitutes in the football game, but you see the talent level they have, the speed. They just kind of retool, and it's a chance for these younger players to come in and get some quality game defense, experience. At number 31, five yards from the end of the run. And get five more yards here at the end of this play. When you get these guys out there, Bills, you talked about you never know if someone's going to be needed and a chance to get into a football game and, and uh, step up. Uh, anytime an injury occurs, whoever's next on that depth chart has to perform, and these coaches don't expect anything less. These guys, uh, they practice every day. They all go through the same drills, and everything is built on one thing, and that's a team effort, and uh, they're all happy to be out there performing, and it's a good, fun uh, opportunity, I think, for both teams because with North Texas, you've got some of their reserves in there as well. Yeah, as we mentioned with Byerly, also Nevins has been in there, and now they'll break with a fourth down and a third down. And I think a fourth and 16 to go. Byerly, he goes forward and is stopped shy. I beg your pardon, I think we had fourth and 16 on our screen. It was actually. And that's what they had on the scoreboard here, but it was actually a third down in about six. So everybody having trouble paying attention when it gets to 58 to nothing. Dibbles made the tackle that time for Texas. Larry is a junior from Lancaster, Texas. Final seconds of the third period counting down here as Candlebar in to kick. Aaron Ross is deep at his own 22 for the Longhorns. See if Texas is going to get the opportunity here. Yep, they will. Oh, almost blocked again. Ross Simmons, a fair catch. He touched it and then dives on it. And that ends the third quarter. Longhorns pick up 14 more after a 44-0 halftime lead. And it's 58-0 after three here in Austin. We'll be back with a fourth quarter. In his jersey, they should match, right, Bill? But, well, we've got it here on our books now, 31. I don't know if it should be 31 of the jersey or not, but nonetheless, it's a touchdown. 
How are they going to score that one? Give it to 31 or 46. Well, he's 5'11", 234, a sophomore from Angleton, Texas. Texas, I guess you can add it up, and then he'd be Kyle Thornton. <laughs> 77. <laughs> add him up. <laughs> Huge, huge run there, Walt, to set that, that uh, touchdown up. Was it Taylor? Yes. Well, they're really making everybody pay attention when they say, all right, let's just put it in a different jersey on you out here. <laughs> and the drive for yard, or four plays 87 yards. Taylor had the big one with 74 yards of that, I believe it was. And Texas will kick it off again. From the goal line. Moore. 30, 35, and scampers out of bounds. You know, I just noticed something there on that kickoff, Bill. The ball is kicked and right behind the receiver. The cannon goes off, and we feel that cannon all the way up here, so you've got to know the returner is on the field feeling that just as he catches the ball. That thing packs a pretty good punch down there. And it's telling you, run, run. <laughs> just in case you need any motivation. All right, there's Amar Hall. Celebrates his touchdown. There you go. Got the headshot, got everything up there. We got you, ID. Got a little smile on his Give face. Give his dues and our apologies. Kevin Moore, sprint weather, sprints it out across near the 47 yard line. Moore, last year, three touchdowns, carried 68 times, 267 yards. And tonight, Moore now with eight carries for 23 yards. North Texas, 30 yards rushing on 21 attempts. And the passing game, nine of 19 for 84 yards. Well, they outfit them early here, Bill. I'll tell you, merchandise, that's one of the things that Texas has done extremely well over the years. And right now, that you know, in the NCAA, there's a lot of logos and stuff out there, but Texas ranks overall third in retail merchandise sales across the country. They're only behind two schools. They're North Carolina and Michigan, and uh, it's a pretty good mark there. That logo is everywhere. And Texas tradition, everywhere here in Austin you go to, you see uh, a lot of that, uh, that burnt orange color. And, you know, this program has done so well under Mac Brown. One of the things that is you know, interesting to talk about here at the University of Texas, we talk about their athletic programs, and. They're actually working this year on an $80 million athletic budget. And uh, that funds a lot of the activities here. And football obviously draws in the most revenue for that. $55 million this year is going to be uh, generated through football to support the athletic programs here. And it all goes back to the students to go you know, to the facilities. And uh, it's a first class uh, environment and obviously a first class educational opportunity here at the University of Texas. Certainly done it right here, and Matt Brown has been the latest architect of the success story for the Longhorns and well on his way to a successful start here in 04 with a 65 nothing pounding here of North Texas. And let's go down quickly to John for an injury update. Yeah, quickly, I'll tell you, Bill, that uh, Brian Carter, the wide receiver for the Longhorns, will not return to this game. He is out with a sore right knee. He will be reevaluated tomorrow. Over here on the uh, North Texas sideline, we're looking at Montrell Parks, the linebacker that went down with a vicious hit on that last drive. Uh, by the Longhorns. He has ice on the right knee. No official update on his condition yet, but it doesn't look like he'll be returning to this game either, guys. Thank you, John. Scott Derry provided the collision with Joey Byerly, the North Texas quarterback. Well, if we can take a look at the end of that run there and see Byerly run. Now, remember, he's 6'4", 254 pounds here, Bill. This is a big, strong quarterback running down the field. Forget the penalty there. Look at Byerly here. He's not going down. He's going forward through the... That's uh, Robert Killebrew, the linebacker, who kind of took that ball. Penalty will bring it back for North Texas, though. With 12.50 remaining in the game, and it's 65-0. Texas keeping you updated on their totals. 481 yards rushing. They're 15 of 22 in the passing game. And a total of 641 yards. 160 passing, 41 rushing. And... Again, 51 is needed to tie that record set against Rice. And the most impressive thing might be 
per play. They're nine yards per play, the Longhorns, to 2.9 for North Texas. Nine yards per play. Most games, no, you look games at, you're looking at five to six yards per play on, on performance offensively, and that that's a, a tremendous, tremendous output here offensively for the University of Texas. Cedric Benson been relaxing for quite a while after his 15 carry 181 yard performance with two scores. Of course, Texas needs a little rest here. They got a nice uh, opener, but next week it's the University of Arkansas they had a chance on to the road. Yeah, I visited with Cedric a little bit yesterday, and he really did look relaxed. He looks relaxed tonight, looked relaxed running the football. And looks like he's poised to have a, have a big year here for the Longhorns. Byerly keeps the football, gets back to the 47 yard line. Mentioned earlier some comments of Mac Brown about Daryl Dickey he certainly has great respect for him. Daryl is a star uh, now. Uh, it's just that uh, people are just starting to realize how good he is. I think he'll have coaches or athletic directors from all over the country trying to get him every year now at North Texas. Uh, his run for three years has been so consistent that that's not going to change. Uh, we're really impressed with the way they're coached. Darrell at 43 years old and leading his team to three straight Sun Belt titles. This pass by Byerly is dropped by Moore. You know, last year, Gary, you take a look, they go 7-0 in the league, 9-4 overall. The year before, 8-5 overall, 6-0 in the Sun Belt. And then his first title, they went 5-7 overall, but 5-1 in the league. And he took over a program that was about as far down as you can get. They, too, are getting an increase in some facilities and, and uh, making their inroads in Division I football. They really are. Then uh, People are looking at North Texas, looking at Daryl Dickey, looking at the program, and he's going to be a coach that is sought after. So if they want to keep him in North Texas for any duration, uh, we're going to have to do something to sweeten the pot, I think, here in the near future. Today. The kick by Kettlebar and fair catch called, and Texas runs away from it. And it'll be tags inside the 30 yard line. And that's where the Longhorns will take over with 10.53 remaining in the football game. Well, Bill, what do you think about the new Bevo? A little different color, right? It's got a little, little more, a uh, little more cream on a little color on the side. Well, who gets credit for this victory? 13 or 14? So it's 13. Was it split? Let it the half. Yeah, they give him a half victory. So what does the new beat? What does the old Bevo do? Where are we going with the old Bevo? There's 14, looking fresh. So 13 is going to be uh, have a chance to just go relax now, right? 20 years in, you got 20 years of service in, so you're going to get your pension, or how I does that work? It's not turning into tomorrow's barbecue. No, no, I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going <laughs> to. John might have some answers on that. He's been down there with them a little bit. And all over the Bevo story tonight. Here's Texas, again with the running game and. The Longhorns getting everybody into the act early tonight and Palmer, the Hobbs the ball carrier that time. See McCoy also in as we've seen just I was looking earlier, there's about 10 sets of double numbers on the Texas squad, but as we've noticed, there's been more than that tonight because of the strange circumstances of the 65 nothing game. And now Texas with it second and five at the 36 yard line. Nordgren hands it off and nothing doing this time on the second down play as Knowlton makes the tackle. Well, it looks like the Texas uh, defense is poised to get a shutout. 65 uh, points unanswered. North Texas hasn't found a way to, to move the ball when they've had the ball on offense. And that's a uh, tremendous feat here to shut out any football team and, and answer with your offense with 65. That's a tremendous number in itself, Bill. 9.23 to go, and there could be more in store. Jones split out wide right. Fake to Hobbs, and then the keeper by Nordgren, and he is tackled after hitting the 41. Don't know if he got the first down or not. We'll see. Looks like he's going to be just short of it there. The line judge is going to be very, very close, probably about a foot short of that first down. Everybody happy on that Longhorn sideline. 
They know with the tough Big 12 schedule, nights like this, time to sit and enjoy. Meanwhile, the opposite sideline, some long faces for UNT. The home opener against Florida Atlantic coming up next week. 6 p.m. up in Denton before they have road games against the Big 12 opponents, Colorado and Baylor. Then they get into the Sun Belt. First and 10. Hand it off right up the middle that time for Texas. It's Hardy making the carry. Albert, last year as a freshman, 14 rushes, 67 yards. Second and eight after pickup of two. And again, Hardy, as Texas just being very basic, right up the middle, not trying to do anything to add any more to this one, but you're still gonna have to stop it and tackle them in order to keep them out of the end zone. And you see the man here right in the middle of your screen, that's Greg. Uh, I think that's the right man. The offense coordinator here for uh, University of Texas. Greg Davis. Greg Davis. Take it easy up there. Doing a good job here. It's a sixth year at this school and works with the quarterbacks primarily. Likes obviously what he sees and about Vincent Young and Cedric Benson here tonight. McCoy goes to the top of the screen here with third down and seven for Texas and Norgren. Again hands it off as Jones is the ball carrier this time. Harrison makes the tackle. talked about earlier Bill you know this stadium being being named Daryl K Royal Texas Memorial Stadium named after uh, Daryl Dickey was named after uh, Daryl Royal coaching family with a lot of father respect. James and yeah. but certainly not fond memories of tonight's contest for Daryl Dickey Bill Land, Gary Reasons, John Radigan with you here in Austin where the Longhorns fans have been taking their time heading for the exits. Some savoring and enjoying as Darrell looks on. He's certainly not enjoying a moment of this. Penalty called against the University of Texas. Greg Johnson is the punter. And Quinn is the deep man for UNT. They'll stay away from it, and they will down it in the 15-yard line vicinity. Let's go down to John Radigan with Casey Hampton. Oh, yeah, I tell you, there were lots of cheers in the first half of this game, obviously, with all the offensive output, but one of the biggest cheers was when big Casey Hampton was put up on the big screen here. Longhorn fans haven't forgotten, and now your NFL career is going almost as well as your college career. It is, man. No, it was nice to come back out here, check my boys out, see how they're doing. They look really, really good tonight. You are with the Pittsburgh Steelers now. We're an all-pro, Pro Bowl player last year. You really feel like you got the basis for that right here. Yeah, I, I, I learned a lot of what I do now right here. You know, this is where it all started at, and, you know, I try to come back once, at least one time a year and come check them out. And what do you think about what you've seen tonight? They look good. I mean, offense is a club, 65 points they haven't scored, so you can't ask for nothing else. Almost a perfect game. Almost. Great to talk to you. Good luck this season with the Steelers, Casey. We appreciate it. That is Casey Hampton. Bill, Gary, back up to you guys. Thanks, John. Yep. He was fun to watch here. Big defensive lineman. What a move, stud. Moved real well and having a great career in the NFL as well. Yeah, no surprise there. As Texas has churned him out. Longhorns, what's ahead at Arkansas next week? Some paybacks due there. And then, of course, they've got Rice. I have that one for you on Fox Sports Net. 
Then they open the Big 12 slate against Baylor before the game. Red River shootout in Dallas against Oklahoma. And they also go out to Lubbock, the Texas Tech. Well, that's a kind of a scary game these days because Mike. Uh, Mike Leach got Mike it going Leach out there. Has, yeah. yeah, he's got a lot of stuff going on out there, and they they can they can upset anybody out there. So, a couple of couple of games here on the schedule that uh, are a little bit difficult. Now they also travel to Texas A&M at the end of the year. That's always a big rivalry game. But uh, the games Oklahoma at Texas Tech and even at Colorado can be a little bit tricky. Uh, the Longhorns a uh, kind of a tough road, you know, to, to get to where they want to be at the end of this season. That would be to win the Big 12 South. Perhaps the Big 12 championship and even a national championship. Well, a nice opening statement made here tonight with it 65 to nothing. Byerly's pass nearly picked off and then the ruled incomplete out at the 22 yard line. It's Jennifer Jackson. And the Mean Green, as we mentioned, Florida Atlantic for their home opener next week in Denton before back to back road matchups with Colorado and Baylor. A huge win a year ago when they uh, defeated Baylor and uh, kind of a last uh, minute affair there against the Baylor Bears. Big win for their program under Daryl Dickey. I'm sure they'd like to try to resurrect some of that magic and perhaps have a, another win against a Big 12 opponent. Colorado, by the way, tonight playing rival Colorado State leading 17-7. That one in Boulder. Cadlebar kicking out of his own end zone. Ross, fair catch at the 45 of North Texas with 4.16 remaining. We'll take a brief timeout. We'll be back. Bevo 14 liking what he sees the first time around. 65 zip. Welcome back. Sorry we missed a few plays here as Texas, uh, they just picked up and moved on. And we come back for a third down and eight. You haven't missed much. The ball is at the 43 yard line. The quarterback is McCoy for Texas. Third and eight. And Matthew, sophomore out of Dallas, 6'3, 195. Hands it off. And Hobbs. Number 28, Hobbs on the gear. Makes it to the 38 yard line. And fourth down as Allen Harrison makes the tackle. Let's go back down to John with more on Bevo and the transformation here. Yeah, ever the intrepid reporter, I heard you guys asking, what's happening to Bevo 13? This is 14, as you guys have already identified. 14 finished this game and finished the second half. 13 now goes out to pasture, but 13 was a 20 and a half year old animal. They tell me that's like a 90 year old man. Uh, 13 now goes out to pasture. No hay and grass for him. No, they call it sweet feed. It's a mixture of corn and molasses. Sounds like something even we'd like, but that is how 13 will spend the rest of his days. And now this two and a half year old animal will be Bevo for years to come. A little corn and molasses. John was just going to saddle up next to him there. Yeah, I'm not riding him. You know what those handlers I've been watching a little bit. They, they keep clear of this one. I'm not sure that he's as docile as as as, uh, as 13 was. So you know, but 13. Seven years, I guess that's dog years, like right? same thing. You know, animal is it kind of? He said 90 years at 91, right? I'm looking forward to my corn and molasses for the post-game meal here. Okay, really wait here. We've got 147 to get to it, and Texas will finally punt it away. Nice punt. Yep. As UNT will take over deep in its own territory. Kicker allegedly Greg Johnson from Lyburn, Georgia, sophomore, 6'1", 190, where they jostle the numbers around here we feel pretty confident that 33 yarder but the important was uh, where he put it down on the 10 yard line nice well, job uh, you know it's a good good punter number two number 97 you don't know, yeah. used to seeing too many of those you reserve for a speedy defensive lineman but uh, I guess when you come here to the University of Texas it's good to have a number it means Take you're out there with that football team and Rick Johnson a chance to punt one away Make the comments that you like, Gary, on the top 10 college football as Oklahoma winning the day as North Texas takes over at its own 10. They had a chance to watch them at Oklahoma game. They started out pretty well. And wow. Hey, wow, Oregon State up on uh, LSU in the fourth quarter. That'd be a huge, huge upset there. Georgia looked like they're going to be poised to be good this year. Number four, Georgia. And Michigan rolling on against Miami of Ohio. Ohio State. Will uh, interstate battle there with Cincy. 
And West Virginia putting it all on East Carolina, 56 to 23. Of course, one of the premier matchups in college football been delayed because of Hurricane Francis with Miami and Florida State that was scheduled to go Monday night. They pushed that back. We certainly wish those well that are fighting that storm down there in the Sunshine State. First and ten for UNT. Firely the quarterback again. And the pitch out. The smothering tackle that time. Jamario Thomas is a guy that got a lot of work on the last scrimmages for North Texas, and he gets his first carry of the night. Thomas is 5'11", 195, freshman out of Longview, Texas, with a Spring Hill High School. Second and 10 with 107 and count. Byerly connects to Covington. He is knocked out of bounds. Griffith makes the stop there. And it'll be third and three here for North Texas with one minute to go. What's Daryl Dickey take out of this one? Tough, you, huh? This is a tough one here. This is not a whole lot positive for your football team. Hopefully he comes out of here healthy. He doesn't want his players to get banged up too much in a ball game like this. Been very physical. Didn't get a penalty on the field here. Illegal participation at 12 players on the field for for North Texas. He knows he's going to take his lumps with the kind of schedule that he has, Bill, early on in the season. And you know, like I talked about earlier, he tries to get character players at his program, recruiting good people, guys that have Legal a lot of character because they understand they're going to go through some tough times. Five yards, especially early three. in the year, and playing games that realistically they're not supposed to win. You know, North Texas. Look at their program and where they're at development-wise. It's not on par with what the University of Texas is. So for them to come in here and expect to, to do exceptionally well is, is really, you know, not something Daryl Dickey thought was going to happen. Not realistically. He just hopes his players are going to be, uh, you know, be better players overall. Try to get a little better each play out there. It's a little bit of coach speed, but in reality, he really is trying to get that done. One minute to go with a third down and seven. Byerly escapes one defender back on his own five still being chased nearly picked off Foster Brandon Foster coming up with the big play redshirt freshman from Arlington Bowie Boy for people like that that are getting their first action here tonight some folks of course sitting here going all right well, what's to be gained here with those it's valuable playing time any snaps that you can get these guys you never know where they might be needed well, the coaches are going to evaluate this tape. They'll evaluate these players very much so. And, uh, it's good to evaluate them against another team where you can see a little bit of different perspective. It's hard to evaluate sometimes against your own because you're not going full speed. You're not going live tapping, live blocking, all those things that you're doing here in this contest. Great punt that time by the North Texas punter. Cad Labar as Ross Fair catches back on his own 36-yard line. And Mac Brown, Greg Robinson visiting there with 51 seconds remaining. I think it's a good match those two. I think that uh, Greg Robinson and talking to him uh, he likes it here in Austin. He likes uh, the opportunity here. He thinks that uh, he's already taken he's in his mind and his family's mind. He's made his move from the from the pro game back to the college game where he's had his roots as a coach and he likes it here. He likes the, the opportunity to to bring Texas back to I guess to a higher level of prominence get to those championship level games. McCoy again the quarterback. Hobbs follows his blockers and picks up a few. You know, you talk about coaches coming in here. You lose a couple of good coaches. Hardy McCrary's gone and Carl Reese, the defense coordinator here, and Matt Brown's, you know, spoke volumes of those two guys with me about the, what he meant to their pro, what they meant to his program and, and everything. And you bring a Dick Tomey in here, brings a different perspective. Uh, sometimes you have to change some things subtly. Not not a great amount, but uh, you change things subtly to get over the hump, get over the hurdles, try to make that extra extra effort to get to, get to that level where you want to be at. Uh, I think Matt Brown is real comfortable with uh, with Dick Tomey and, and Greg Robinson on the defensive side of the ball. And again, Hobbs the carry. Monroe makes the tackle, and that'll do it as the Texas Longhorns convincingly 
shut out the North Texas Mean Green. 65 nothing. the final score here as Daryl Dickey comes over to congratulate Mac Brown and Texas. A 671-yard offensive performance tonight for the Longhorns as Benson, 181 and two touches. Young, Selvin, 102 yards rushing and two scores. And Vince Young, impressive in both running and throwing. He threw for 153 and a touchdown on 14 of 21. And he also ran eight times for 49 yards. And everybody got into the act. It's one of those complete football games that you like as a coach. I know that Matt Brown is very pleased with his production offensively, defensively. Everything went the way of the Longhorns tonight. And for Daryl Dickey in the... Mean Green from North Texas, well, they've got some lumps in this football game, but they'll come out of it, and they'll, like they've done the last three years, hopefully do well when they get to conference play and have a good season ahead of them. So the Longhorns get everybody in, and that's certainly something that everybody's looking for on the victorious side as Texas Seeing the eyes of Texas here and celebrate this season opening win before they take on the University of Arkansas. We'll come back and visit with some of the winners. Stay with us here as Texas wins at 65 nothing. 65 nothing Texas the UT tire tower brightly lit with the orange with the victory for the Longhorns and John Radigan is down with Mac Brown Mac Brown still <laughs> exhorting the players still having fun with him. It was a great performance at halftime. We talked about now the only test is let's see if they can sustain it in the second half and boy they really did. They came right out and drove it right down the field. Well they did. I, I was really proud that we've grown up some since last year at this time in that area and North Texas is a good football team. We just forced some turnovers tonight and got some breaks. They'll go back and win their conference championship now. The thing we didn't have, guys did everything we asked them to do tonight. We just didn't have much adversity. Next week at Arkansas, we're going to have some adversity, so we're going to have to play better next week to still win. When you have running backs run like they did tonight, it obviously says, says a lot about the offensive line, doesn't it? Well, it does. Our offensive line... Uh, had not played in a game last year at this time. Uh, they're much better. Uh, they've played together now. We only lost one guy out of this group. We'll have them all back next year. So uh, hopefully we can build on this win by running the ball more. How important was it to get a shutout? Well, I think it's important anytime you get a shutout. It's hard to win. It's really hard to get a shutout. We got both of those tonight, and that should be exciting for our defensive guys going to Fayetteville. And you mentioned Fayetteville. Is there any, can you carry momentum? I know that's a difficult thing to do week to week, but you obviously have a lot of momentum right now. Well, we can coach off of this film with a lot of little bitty things that we didn't do well. We'll tell the guys we'll learn more about ourselves next week because we'll have adversity. We've got better players in North Texas. Arkansas's players will be like ours, so it'll be a little bit more difficult next week. Yeah, congratulations. Thank 65 you. to nothing. Nice start. We appreciate it. That that is Mac Brown. We'll be down here getting a few more interviews uh, as the players leave the field. And so for now, we'll send it back up to Bill and Gary. We'll be back here.